Ladies and gentlemen, you are about to listen to the incomparable Win Twice Wrestling Podcast with your hosts, Scott and Holly. So sit back, relax, and prepare to be entertained. Hello everybody and welcome to episode number 8 of the Win Twice Wrestling Podcast alongside your co-hosts Scott and Holly. Hello. How was your new year Holly? It was good, what I remember of it. I was going to say, did you have a little <laughs> bit too much sauce? Maybe, maybe. Well I could tell by the voice messages. Oh god. Oh yeah. they were lovely though. Oh no. It's nice to know you're appreciated. Mushy. It was, yeah. Oh, I didn't quite doesn't. understand the voice message that you left. Yeah. Like, Let's just hit it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You don't remember that? No, I don't. I'll have, I would no, come back, but you hate not. your voice. Not, no. on, not on the air, my phone's no. downstairs. But it's nice to know I'm appreciated. Yeah, I'll of say course. That. But course. I'm glad you had a nice time. Um, so, this episode was your picking, wasn't it? And there was, it was. There was a bit of an issue. Oh, originally. there was. Do you want to explain <laughs> to the people listening what the issue was? So, initially, I wanted to watch um, an NXT, I don't know what you call it, S- show. Takeover? Yeah. Yeah. And I picked the one I wanted. And then when I came to watch it, I realised it was a two-parter. Yeah, I think it was Stand and Deliver 2020. Yeah, and the one I'd chosen was like day two. Yeah. And I was like, this is confusing, let's just... Because w- when we do that, we can do part one, one exactly. episode, part two, the other. Makes yeah, sense. so, so what we did you scrapped that. Yeah. And then I pulled it out the back <laughs> Yeah. went for King of the Ring. 2002. So, I guess the question is, how did you eventually <laughs> land upon this show? So, I went to the uh, historical pay-per-views section. And it went back beyond 2017. Who'd have thought I it? know, right? I know. And I looked at it, and you know what? I looked, uh, uh, I looked at it briefly, and I thought, there'll be no John Cena. There'll be no Randy Orton. Let's just. let it go. Why not? Yeah, this was just... So, you actually did it intentionally to yes. avoid... Yes. Seeing beefy flies oh. and crew cut. Yes. Okay, I respect that. Just because, you know. And also I thought you won't expect that I'll have picked something in 2002. Even though like there's a fairly sweet spot for both of us, yeah. because that's kind of when we're in our yeah. formative years watching wrestling. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then again, there's none of your favourites on here, like Edges I really here. hoped that Jeff, Jeff might be here. on it. Matt Hardy appears in the background he briefly. He does, he does. But, but apart no. from that... I'd say there's only one of you, and they're not a favourite necessarily, but they always no. do get get you going, oh. get your engine revving, don't they, just? As it were, yeah. Um, which again we will get to as we go through the show. But yeah, so episode eight is WWE King of the Ring 2002. Mm-hmm. Took place on the 23rd of June 2002 at the Nationwide Arena in Columbus, Ohio. Attendance on the night was 14,198, with a buy rate of 320,000. So it's not a particularly strong buy mm-hmm. rate towards the end of the Attitude Era. I don't know if we're still classing 2002, June, as the end of the Attitude Era, if that's kind of merging into the John Cena era, the Ruthless Aggression Era. Oh, yeah. But as he's not on the scene yet, I'll still class it as being the end of the Attitude Era. But looking at some of the other pay-per-views that we've seen, because obviously this was still a pay-per-view era, yeah. it wasn't a premium live event. No. In 2005, like I said, we looked at SummerSlam, mm-hmm. and we've seen other shows around that era. So SummerSlam, I think, was double the the buy rate of this, okay. and this was still supposed to be in the hotter period for wrestling. So it's not a great buy rate, but King of the Ring historically yep. hasn't been a massive pay per view show for them. I like the idea behind yeah. King of the Ring. So, in terms of the concept mm-hmm. of King of the Ring, what did you know about it? So I vaguely remembered from back in the day of it being like a. I don't know how, you would, how I would actually describe it, but you know, like football teams, like you play you, that person goes on to the like next round. Cup, knockout. Effectively. I'll call it a tournament. Yes. Because it is. So I do remember it being a thing. Yeah. I didn't remember there being a, like a semi-final? Yeah. And a final in one. Well, they've done it on other shows where they've had they? multiple matches. I think, was it 2000 year Kurt Angle won it? Mm. I think he had three matches oh, wow. on the night. Um which is interesting. It shows stamina as well, so I think it gives the person a lot of credit because they have yeah. to appear on that show for a long yeah. period of time as well. Um, but the one thing I didn't like to start off with, because I like the King of the Ring as a concept, I like the Royal Rumble as a concept, I like Money mm-hmm. in the Bank, because for me it's signalling who the next Big threat thing is. is. Yeah, yeah. No pun intended, obviously, well. on that. But we kind of get an idea of who they're looking to move yes. to as Who's a Who's going to get champion. the next push, basically. Basically. So it's always felt like it should be treated as important to mm-hmm. me. And the thing I didn't like about how this show started off, because we start with an opening package, and it shows the history of the King of the Ring. Yes. 
doesn't really show the history fully. It shows the very recent history of what they wanted to show. Okay. So I think so. The opening package suggests that King of the Ring started in 1993. Yeah. Because it shows Bret Hart winning. Yes. It. I said, but this is, just isn't the case. I said, and then I actually went and specifically looked back. Oh, so I knew okay. who the first winner was, but oh, I didn't okay. know when I'm it was. So we've ready got, for my educating here. So we've got all the winners here. So we've got uh, Don Morocco, won it in 1985. Who, so the first ever the King of the Ring. Harley Race won it in 1986. Randy Savage in 87. Okay. Ted DiBiase in 88. Tito Santana in 1989. And Bret Hart in 1991. They didn't do it in 92, but then 93 is where they picked up from. Oh, we saw Bret Hart, Owen Hart, That's weird that they Edge, would just start from there. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think Triple H won it as well. Stone Cold won it. So it's got quite a bit of prestige mm. going into it and the fact that they chose not to show it going back yeah. as far as they did I don't know what the purpose of that was no. I think they either thought that the audience wouldn't care yeah. about that because the people involved hadn't like betrayed WWE they weren't in their bad books right, so there's no reason for yeah. them to not show them mm-hmm. WCW was dead and buried and a lot of these people never went apart from Bret Hart mm. never went to WCW oh, okay. anyway so I don't really kind of get why they yeah. didn't show it but selective history annoys me oh. and uh it, yeah it started off and i thought because i'm pretty sure that you wouldn't know who um, had won absolutely it absolutely not I, no. but at least i reckon you know most of those names um a couple in passing so yes. you'd know randy savage of course you'd know harley race i know that i i know the name if you showed if i saw them yeah, i'd go would. oh it's that i person. think you'd probably recognize all of them apart from maybe don morocco and tito santana that is correct well, so we get you know me well. <laughs> educational pieces coming forward, um, and then yeah, we just go into seeing Jr. and the King. Mm-hmm. Welcome us to the show. The classic combination of the Attitude Era back yes. on commentary. I think the other show that we saw around this time, um, so it would have been what Survivor Series two thousand one. Mm-hmm. We did in an earlier show. Yeah, this was um, obviously Heyman had been removed from commentary. The Alliance mm-hmm. had lost the battle. They brought the king back to commentary because they oh, removed him I see. as part of the alliance yeah. taking over. And I think there was backstage reasons as well mm-hmm. why they did it. They wanted to take him away. For it. I can't remember if this was an allegation period. No, right. Either way, that the classic duo are back on the announce team, and we don't get a tour of uh, the international announcers. No. And my tape isn't playing in German, so oh, okay, going, good. Going really well so good. far. Going really well. Before we get into it too much, yeah. now, hmm. King of the Ring, yep. they don't do it as a separate thing. It's no. like a, this is a King of the Ring match rather than a... No, they so they or, do a tournament, but it's a bastardised version of it. So right. I just feel like all the meaning's gone out of it. So you had like, Seamus has won it. Bad News Barrett. Corbin. Corbin has won it. I knew that one. Xavier Woods has won it. Right, okay. And they don't really It's not do necessarily anything. now the person's not going to get like the big old push. No, it's, it's very much been devalued from a... Mm-hmm. not a career making opportunity but I guess it was to be fair at one point to very much a king of the mid card okay that's what it feels like to okay. me I feel like it's just been it's only because when I when I decided on this show yeah I then went and searched like okay I'll let's search for king of the ring and they all came up and then I saw I mean I did see the one that had Baron Corbin's face on it but and I looked at the length and I was like it's 40 minutes yeah. I'm so confused I'm like oh they're not separate events anymore it's no, just included it within like a episode of whatever yeah basically that's what they did so they right. do it over a few roars a few mm-hmm. smackdowns and then might crown them at a pay-per-view right but okay. oftentimes it's not even done like that so to me it's kind of pointless they okay. tr- should treat the king of the ring do you remember how we were talking during evolution about how i like the idea of the may young classic and what yes. it presented because mm-hmm. it's kind of a proving ground for younger women yeah if you don't want to do that turn the king of the ring and make the queen of the ring as well yeah and do tournaments like that make it its Good own idea. thing put a pay-per-view in i don't know i feel like it's just a missed opportunity again yeah. that they're not capitalizing on um but yeah anything else that you wanted to no that's over? my questions are done for no, now. That's like i said as i'm rattling through because i've done extensive notes of course as as i usually tend to do for these things so if at any point you have anything yep. you want to shout out please okay. do interrupt me i'm only concerned about what notes i've got because the last one it wasn't even the last show because that was about the women. It was the one before, and all of a sudden it was just comments about things that I didn't even remember, like thighs and thighs, all of yes. the shop. So we'll see. We'll see what I thought uh, when we get there. I assume Prosecco was on hand. I did actually have two. Yes, because I got the picture with the thumbs you up when did. I asked you if you were watching it. So you yeah. Did. So we start off with our opening match of the night, mm-hmm. and it's Chris Jericho against Rob Van Dam in the King of the Rings semi-final match. Very happy with this match. 
it's a good it's a strong show starter isn't I it I like the combination of these two together I could watch it all day long because similar in stature yep similar ability levels they're different though they bring yes. different aspects to the table yep. but they've both still got it's still kind of equally matched if you know what I mean yeah so in theory this is a match between two highly respected people mm -hmm. in the company and who've got fairly decent positioning on the card yeah Chris Jericho had not long since come off his first undisputed champion yes. reign. So he was probably deemed to be higher in the pecking yeah. order against Rob Van Dam, who even though he was a massive thing in ECW, mm -hmm. big part of the alliance when they did the whole alliance versus WWF thing, but he's the intercontinental champion yes. now. So it feels a little bit, even though I don't necessarily agree with this, but I could see how it could be viewed like that from the outside, like a bit of a step down for Jericho. Okay. So he was put in the main event scene and went, oh, actually, let's pull you back a little bit. And that's probably doing Rob Van Dam a disservice, yeah. but I think that's how a lot of people might have okay. viewed it. But again, as you said, the combination of the two on paper oh, is brilliant. good. This is my type of match yes. as well. Yep. Um, so I'm sure you've got some comments on this. And again, please oh, feel free to jump in all over and I will stop talking, I promise. Yep. So we've got Jericho in peak form, as I'm sure Holly will agree. Peak, yep. <laughs> this is the era of Jericho for me. The only if I could exception, package him, yeah. this is this is how I'm packaging him. Bar one exception, I'd say. Go on then. Facial oh. hair. Facial hair's a bit, uh, bit yeah. odd. It's not his best. Like He's had good facial hair where he's yeah. kind of had shorter, stubbly yes. kind of thing that works. Mm -hmm. But the whole chin strap. You're not a fan. Yeah, it's a bit Billy Goat. <laughs> Just a little bit Billy Goat. But again, apart from that, yeah. this is pretty much the peak. For me, yeah. my favourite era of Jericho mm -hmm. was his late portion of, from an aesthetic yes. perspective, from late WCW okay. or his very early part of WWF where he had like his hair kind of tied oh, up right. in a long po like part of it in a ponytail yeah. and the rest just hanging down when he interrupted The Rock. Uh, Do you okay. remember him yeah. making his debut? Yeah. That, for me, was his oh, physical okay. peak. So you you'd put it. him in a... That's how you'd package him up. If I was doing a physical representation yeah. of the best era of Jericho, that's okay. the one for me. Yeah. So this is a little bit after it, but I could yeah. allow it taking oh, away the facial you'll hair. You'll allow it. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'm very generous, <laughs> very magnanimous, as I'm sure you'll agree. And RVD, and unquestionably my favourite of his ring gear. Oh, so good. It's just... So good. We always talk about his... Um, He's allowed to wear a unitard. I said, I'd said singlet, but yes, unitard. I forgot the... <laughs> The typical the phrasing of it, yeah. And that's the exact outfit that he's got on, yes, on the shelf, on, uh, shelf. on my shelf of uh, Figgy Collectibles. <laughs> um, I put on paper, this is a great match to start the pay-per-view. Yeah, for sure. A uh, few hold exchange to start off before quick arm drags and both miss drop kicks. Mm -hmm. So I quite like the bit where they both go out for a drop kick at the same time and they miss it. Yes. One thing that can be frustrating about that to me, and it's not in this case, is that you've seen it before, and it tends to be more in older wrestling, is when someone misses a drop kick, mm. even though they're landing effectively the same way, they sell it like they've hurt themselves. But you always land yeah, even like if that. You, even if you, even hit, if you them, hit it, you're, you're, you're pushing yourself off someone, so would that not hurt yeah. more? But anyway, that, like I said, they didn't fall foul of it, but it's something that I, I like to, to pick up on. Uh, we then get RVD going uh, into Jericho's face with a classic Rob Van Dam. Yes. Uh, which you've got to love. Oh, just, it doesn't get boring. Yeah. And the crowd never don't join in with that no. as well. It's amazing for someone, because Rob Van Dam is so charismatic in the ring. Mm -hmm. And when he's not talking, very charismatic. And then he talks and it's gone. Okay. Do you not agree? <laughs> like when he, like the only time I've ever seen Rob Van Dam be charismatic when he talks is when he's not given line by line of what to say if he's actually passionate about yeah. something he comes across very well so anything where he's talking about being proud of ecw this kind of stuff that all felt quite natural yeah. and was good but anything i was like whatever dude like it's oh, just i see it okay. takes away from him because he's so so good in the ring mm -hmm. you probably have a different I just we'll just move on okay fine. <laughs> I, feel, I feel like i get what you're saying but because i don't have that knowledge i suppose probably of okay or memory my yeah. memory is shite yeah so probably because i don't he does it a little bit remember it on. yeah yeah we'll get, yeah yeah we'll get okay so y2j slaps rvd who mm -hmm. immediately kicks him straight in the face yeah which got a great reaction from Didn't me it just... it's so good just because as quick as a slap is rvd throws his leg just as quick yeah and that's going to hurt more than a slap absolutely. so absolutely 
I'm absolutely fine with that. So we see a rolling monkey flip and spinning leg drop is greeted with a small, very small ECW chant. Uh-huh. I'm wondering how many shows we're going to see where we get an ECW chant. Because it's True. any time someone from ECW does something, yes. or any bit of hardcore mm-hmm. weaponry gets involved, foreign objects, as some would call them, we always get a bit of an ECW chant. And even though there's nothing hardcore about this because it's Rob Van Dam, we get a little ECW yeah. smattering. Leg Larry by Jericho sends RVD to the apron, but the following Spring Broad attack misses. Spring Broad there. Spring Broad. Spring Broad. Um, so he jumps to the middle rope, goes to go over the top, because normally he hits like a... Well, normally he does that and then hits a drop kick in the yeah. ring. But for whatever reason, he just jumped, went straight over the top, missed everything. So <laughs> that was great. Uh, RVD capitalises with a flying sent on over the top to the floor that Jericho was barely there for. Oh my God. Literally looks like in the last second he moves to effectively get it but it looks like it takes his head off yeah what was weird about the camera angle on that and i've mentioned the uh camera work in ww before and i Mm -hmm. continue to forget the name of the guy who was in charge of it and it's come to me and it's mainly because he's now recently been let go or decided to go from w kevin dunn okay so kevin dunn was one of he's been with vince for decades Mm. decades and decades and his production quality is pretty good but on this one i feel like they made it look quite awkward because the camera angle was really low mm-hmm. so it was almost like the cameraman was lying on the floor and in many ways it kind of saved the blushes of the move yes. itself because even though that, and you can hear the smack oh yeah of rvd hitting yeah. the floor but it didn't look like it was as bad as it probably was no if they'd done the normal camera angle but i knew you'd have uh strong yeah. strong opinions on that the thing is it's, i prefer i prefer that over a suicide dive which seems mad I don't know why, but to me, I feel like if you're going over the top, if you're going to do a somersault over the top, your head is effectively saved rotationally. But you can break your spine. Exactly. It makes no sense. But if you do a suicide dive, you can catch, you can go through, catch your feet, and then you're effect. Which I agree with. But when we discussed about the spear through the middle ropes, yeah, you I said you prefer that, and that to me I is just, more I don't know. It's, it's Every time I see something else, I'm like, oh. I also think it depends who's doing it. True. For some reason, I, I, watched, I would watch RVD and be like, fine. Yeah, like, yeah you trust Because he's got the ability, I'm all right with it. Part of me also <laughs> makes me think he's made of rubber as well, Like so you just bounce yeah. and just get on with it. Yeah. Yeah. But I yeah, I don't know. But I did see that and I went, Oh, it does look like Jericho it literally took Jericho's head off and he's only done that to save yeah. what he can of R V D absolutely smashing into the floor. And I don't know if you notice this or if it's a subconscious thing, but every time we talk about a potential neck or back related mm-hmm. injury, your hands go to your neck oh, and for you sure. support yourself every <laughs> single time. And you do that. I nearly pointed it out right away, but you were talking oh. so I didn't want to interrupt. But Yeah, it just I can't it uh, yeah. So we go back to the ring. We see a springboard sidekick uh, connects for, by RVD. But Y2J kicks the ref into the ropes, crotching Van Dam, which is a theme of the night. Honestly, if we saw this once, we must have seen it about 20 times. We did, like in later matches. Jesus. Everyone's getting bollocks. Everyone's it's very crotch heavy. It's a dick-punching society that Isn't we're involved it? in 2002. I forgot it was so such a thing, I'll yeah, be ev- honest. Every song was done by Papa Roach <laughs> at this, <laughs> this period of time, and it was just a hey, dick-punching don't not, world. <laughs> don't knock Papa Roach. No, I, I'm nothing wrong with Papa Roach. Is it that they're on yeah, my Spotify playlist. Of, but... Yeah, there's a lot of dick moves. Yeah, so. basically. Yeah, uh, But anyway, whatever floats the boat. I don't really like the springboard sidekick I don't mind Rob Van Damme's probably the exception for yes. it only because when you're landing on one leg I'd like to know that your knee is going to remain in its socket only because I've seen someone who shouldn't be up the top rope mm-hmm. jump off the top rope land on one leg and his oh, leg snaps no, in you. half and you just see it yep. flopping mm-hmm. and, it's, and this was about two years before this happened a year or two years before this different company but still it's oh yeah yeah, um, but again, RVD, I don't think, ever had an issue actually doing this mm-hmm. because he's so damn flexible and does this stuff yeah. for fun. So it, it was okay, but it still makes me wince every time. Uh, we see a double underarm superplex from oh, I liked that. RVD, which sends him flying. And RVD's selling the back quite well mm-hmm. in this. He makes proper uh, yeah. noises, and I believe that it actually <laughs> hurts. Yeah. Like, yeah. And that plays the theme into the later part of the show as well. <laughs> Uh, and then I've said RVD attempts a unique leg trip pin I didn't know what to call that no. but he like rolled up the legs with his own legs and yeah. then tried to pin him down but I couldn't remember I the name quite of that cool, but... 
yeah, I just <laughs> didn't even try. I was like, something's going on with his legs. There's a pin. <laughs> Love that. Something is going on with his legs. And then we get Jericho removing the top turnbuckle. Also not the last time we'd see this in the oh, show. Oh, God. Honestly. Uh, and as the ref goes to replace it, RVD has a small package. Obviously, the ref doesn't see it. And I wasn't just talking about his junk there. <laughs> Uh, Y2J again with a skull crushing finale that gets a two and I really don't remember him hitting this move No, but he's done it on what two or three of the shows that we've seen and I have no recollection of this Jericho chokes Rob Van Dam with a wrist tape but misses on a guillotine leg drop attempt over the rope so again crotches himself on the middle rope Uh, Van Dam dodges a shoulder charge uh, in the corner and Jericho continues uh, to miss corner attacks I noticed every time Jericho ran to attack Van Dam in the corner Mm -hmm. he missed or was kicked and it was about four or five times and normally I don't notice that but I was like just stop stop it stop trying it's not working the only thing for me was that I was like it it played for me into what would happen yep because of course something's running towards you just move yep and I was like at least it's keeping with that yeah. but also it's the same thing over and over again and again we know it's a put on but surely if you keep trying the same thing over and over again yeah. and getting the same result that's the definition of insanity do something else <laughs> uh, we see another springboard kick uh, into a step over kick which I really like and I called mm-hmm. it a step over kick because I don't know what to call it but it's when he catches the boot of the other guy steps over it and then swings his yes. back leg round catches them mm-hmm. inside the head very unique to Rob Van Dam but always liked it we then get a leaping enziguri by Y2J, showing that he can also throw yes. kicks, and it was good. Yes. Well done. Um, it leads to an exchange of counters that end with RVD landing on his head from oh a released God. German suplex. Yes. No, oh, it made me very uncomfortable. But it was a good visual, and Rob Van Dam is such a good seller. Yeah. It actually looked very safe. It's just the yeah. way he landed high on his shoulders and then crumpled. Yeah. It, it was good. Very well mm-hmm. done. We get an awkward hot shot by RVD. Uh, leads to a, a split-legged moonsault. Yeah. Uh, then we get the Walls of Jericho, Jericho accounted for a close two. That was... Yeah. Yeah. I just, I'm sorry. Logically, yeah. I know this is pointless to me saying this, but I'm going to do it. RVD yeah. is flexible as fuck. Okay. Walls of Jericho are going to do nothing to him. If you lean far back enough, okay. it will. He just, he's not it's, it's a just, Russian contortionist. Have or... you seen some of the videos that are out there of him doing the split. box split weightlift? Yeah, yeah. Like, it's insane. Yeah, oh no, that's that. Yeah, but he's not bending. I know, in that. but I just, you know, you look at it and you just think, he's well, all right. That's why I like the variant that Chris Jericho doesn't often hit, but he tends to do it with more flexible people where he'll move one of his legs mm. and put his knee in the back. Okay. And bend back, so he's putting extra torque right. and pressure point yeah. on it, that makes which sense. is he probably could do that with RVD, and I don't think he does because no. I know he hits the the. He said the lion salt there. He hits the walls of Jericho later, but I don't think mm-hmm. he does that. Um, then we get RVD's faces bounced off the exposed turnbuckle, and even with his feet on the top rope, RVD still kicks out. So Jericho is clambering all over them to try and yeah. put this one to bed. The referee didn't see it though, oh, at no point. Even though Jericho's literally in front, right on, in front of him, feet on the top rope, didn't yeah. see it. The refs are another theme of things that irritate oh, me in this yes, show. Yeah, it's best I don't <laughs> start. <laughs> so we see Van Damme go to the top rope, but he misses the five-star frog splash. Yeah. Uh, but the lion soap... Lion soap? Lion soap. But the lion salt that Jericho hits yeah. afterwards does connect, but yes. only gets a two. This I like. So RVD goes to hit a Hurricane Rana, yeah. but Jericho catches him. Then yes. turns that into the walls of Jericho. Yes, that was very nice. I like that. Very I've always nice. like that. Especially when it doesn't look like it's completely contrived. Yeah. Um, this felt good. Um, Y2J then uh, kicks Jericho, who crotches himself on the top rope. So that's the third. We're in match one. Three yeah. dick punches. Although this one was weird because he was... So the camera was like right behind RVD. Yes. And you could see Jericho was up there. Yeah. Didn't see RVD move though. And I was like, was he meant to? Does he do Does he do something that you just can't see because of the camera angle? Well, I wrote down... I don't know. RVD kicks him. So I don't know oh. if he kicks his leg out and then Jericho... Oh, maybe I... Because it was so quick. Maybe I just didn't see it for... I I'd, I'd like to think I wouldn't have guessed. Because I feel like no, if you, I hadn't seen it, I'd have commented exactly. what the hell happened no. there. Uh, but yeah, I'll, I'll back myself on that yeah. one. Yeah. Uh, and then as he's crawling away, which I thought was really good. So Jericho's just trying to pull himself away from RVD. RVD, with one leap, goes to the top 
rope hits the five star frog splash yeah. and advances to the final. Now, what I really liked about this is the way he hit the move. Jericho's kind of in an awkward position mm -hmm. and RVD just puts something over him. Yeah. Three. That's brilliant. Don't I need like to that. move him. To face the just camera, hook absolutely the leg. Absolutely not. Just get whatever pin you can. And that's I really like that. So well done to, yes. to both of the guys on this. Enjoyed that. And then we hear the... It should have stopped here. Yeah, it definitely should have. Well, I put we hear the unmistakable voice of Howard Finkel announce the winner, and I miss him. Aww. Yeah, I think he died a couple of years ago now, maybe a bit longer. Um, but he was just such... That's the voice, announcing voice okay. of my childhood. He was, obviously, before Lillian Garcia. Yes. I know you're more of a Lillian Garcia girl. <laughs> yeah, it makes Finkel me sound me ridiculous, is, but yes. I just miss, like, especially for the Royal Rumble, just okay. hearing him announce it at the beginning. Yeah. It's great. And then we get uh, King jumps into the ring mm. to interview RVD. Why he only does it for this match, I don't know. Yeah. He said, oh, let's see if I can get the match, did he? No. And I just wish he didn't, because what did we gain from this? Well, this is where I put here. I said, and I remember how bad RVD's promos are when he's told right, exactly yeah. what to say, and it's not natural. And he goes, whatever. I don't care if it's Test, Brock Lesnar, or Godzilla. Yeah. I mean, well, I would. Okay. <laughs> Ridiculous. I, mean, I don't want to have a match with Brock Lesnar, but I'd rather take him on than a fucking 120 yeah. foot dinosaur. Yeah, yeah, I think I'd fancy my chances more against him. And then Y2J jumps him, puts him in the walls to Jericho yeah. as he screams, I'm the king of I'm the, the world. I'm the king of the world. <laughs> yeah, which was a song that he later did with his band Fozzie. Oh. Yeah. So, again. I get the whole the Jericho coming back thing. Fine, that didn't anger me. Yeah. I can get out in the ring. What did. You, what do you think about his. Um, because when he puts people in uh, submission moves, he's either going, ask him! Yeah. Or, I tap! I tap! As if the rest go, oh, you said I tap! Like, yeah. for me, like, you go, oh, Jericho just said I tap. So you've quit. Oh, I see. Get out. Yeah, but I, I do. I, I don't I, think that. No, I quite like deep. it, though. I do quite like <laughs> it. Then we go backstage. I, oh, I can't bear these. Considering I picked this, after this match and we went backstage, I was like, kill me. <laughs> Just kill me. Why have I, I done this? Match. Why have I done this? I like the match. It's all the it's all the backstage shite. There was a few of them, isn't there? Well, to mm -hmm. be fair, we still get the same shite on the current shows. I know, but for some reason, it's more bearable. I don't know if it is. No. I enjoyed a few of these backstage segments, yeah. whereas I really don't. I mean, do you remember what was his name? That celebrity guy. I oh, don't know because I literally was just thinking about that one. Couldn't I was like, his name. He said John Leslie. That's very no, different. I don't. The person. guy that was with Nudo. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was too much for me. Yeah. So we see Paul Heyman and Brock Lesnar. We do. Brock's I said, in his pants. Yeah, Brock's in his pants. He's ready to go. Well, he's about. He's got to go out. Yeah. He's like the next match up. But Heyman does a great job of hyping up Brock. Did they put Paul Heyman with Brock Lesnar? Because at this point, Brock's skills at having a personality were awful. Uh, yeah, he wasn't a good talker. Right. Uh, I think he, he was. I think he says like two words. Yeah, he's a bit. He was a bit of a loose cannon, right. as you can tell the way he talks mm -hmm. now. He's like, go, Brock, don't swear. Shit! Fuck! And you're like, so oh, supposed okay. to actually give him a chance at actually staying in the company. And could you put him with a better hype man? Oh, perfect pairing. Than Heyman. Perfect pairing. But I think it's because they actually created a, a backstage uh, bond, actually. Nice. Heyman linked him and went, this guy is the, as he said, the next big yeah. thing. And his hype work here for Brock is brilliant. Mm -hmm. Saying that he's uh, more imposing than Godzilla or any Japanese monster as they are fake. He used the F word. Oh dear. He said Brock is real. The next big thing. I said I hate to break it to Paul but pro wrestling is fake mate. Predetermined. <laughs> Predetermined. He's going to be gutted when he finds that out oh. I tell you. But it was a good way It was a good way of yeah. using what obviously RVD had said to yeah. then you know throw it back in his face and we go straight into the, the second semi-final yes, of the night we, did. we see one of your boys oh. we see Test against Brock Lesnar it looks like he's just got out of the shower he did yeah probably did all the baby oil I wonder if that woman mm. from uh, Survivor Series oh, 2001 yeah. was oiling <laughs> him up still... so he hit the light right <laughs> so funny fucking Julie so Tess looking absolutely yoked oh isn't he just full gerbil cheeks inflated oh <laughs> I'm sure Holly's happy yep I was <laughs> I said Lesnar looks utterly intimidating mm -hmm. even then with oh, a yeah. young face he just yeah. looks like a scary scary dude he came from OVW right he did because there was a sign in the crowd and I was like yes I know this now yep. whereas back then I'd have been like what well effectively the graduating class was him Batista mm -hmm. Randy Orton John Cena so oh, okay. the big four from from that era 
uh, or at least the next generation that came through. I said, he looks like a light, uh, he's like a wild animal ready to hunt. Yeah. He just, I think he's only about 22, 23 here as well. Um, I think he was, oh, maybe not this match, but later on, I think I do some, I did do some age Googling later oh, okay. on, but I'm pretty sure he was 20, I think it, 25's in my head. He might have been actually. I think it's 25. When he won the world title, the championship, that record was beaten by Randy Orton, who I think was 24 when he won it. So you're probably right, actually. Okay. Um, sorry, I'm just seeing if I wrote it. But I think he's about 25. But you, still... Yeah. yeah. You're, you're bang on. I think you're probably, Thank to you. be fair, exactly right. A complete contrast from the first semi-final. This is two monsters ready to battle. I actually really enjoyed this. I did. Yeah. And I didn't think I would. I Yeah, I thought, this is going to be boring. And then I was like, oh, actually. I think I might have underappreciated Test. Because mm. his match with Edge at Survivor Series 2001, mm. I thought he looked better than Edge did. Yeah. And in this match, yeah, he was doing some things. Very impressive things. Which, which we'll get to in a second. <laughs> but it was impressive. Mm-hmm. And I think maybe I'm misremembering Test. Yeah. Maybe I'm thinking about him when he had his shorter hair and it was just not as oh, good. Oh, yeah, maybe. That maybe that's what stuck in my head. Yeah. But we start with a long collar and elbow tie up, which sees mm-hmm. two men struggle for physical supremacy. Of course. I put because they're big, big beefy men. They are slapping big, beefy. meat. And it's not often. I mean, I don't know. Maybe back then, I'm not sure. I know there's like big, tall wrestlers. I'm not saying there's not, but it was. It's quite a rare sight to see someone, in my eyes, tower not tower above him, but like yeah. be bigger than Brock. And actually, yes, okay. Brock is more muscular than Tess, but like you say, he's still absolutely jacked. It's different it's kind, kind of like a, muscular. Too, yeah. Though. Whereas, uh, how do I describe it? Brock at this point had the Johnny Bravo esque. Like he was a triangle, not okay. skinny, but like th- like a thinner, slice of Tiberone. Thinner waist, big shoulders. Yes. Big, a Dorito. big shoulders. Mm. Whereas Test was... Sorry, my stomach is rumbling. I don't think we'll be able to hear it on the audio, but it's a real <laughs> it's trick really seeing loud, you try and suppress this. So sorry. That's fine. Um, whereas Test was more, to me, like muscly all over. It was more like a... Not a cylinder, because it makes it sound like he's... Inflated. Tubby, but he's he's not got the triangle shape. No, I know what you mean. Kind Do of cuboid. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I... Just different kinds of muscles. And his is all in his pecs. Oh, when he moves them up and down, I'm sorry. It's like I'm hypnotised. Brilliant, yeah. But you're not shallow, so that's all right. No, I'm not. I'm just looking at his tits. Brilliant. See, if I say that about a woman, it's a whole different issue. I'm not allowed to say that? No, okay, fine. We see a series of shoulder tackles by Brock in the corner, and we hear Goldberg chants. Oh. This is before Goldberg came into the company. Uh, Goldberg's, I think, came in. A little bit later, maybe the rumours were that he'd already signed, but I know right. he came in later in 2002, if not early 2003. Okay. I feel like it was early 2003 now that I've said that. But it shows that a lot of comparisons could be made between the way they were building Brock Lesnar in comparison to Goldberg. So I don't know how much you're aware of the WCW side of things, probably not a lot. Nope. Um, Goldberg's whole build was he was undefeated. Okay. So... They started off with who just come out killer jobber, so do you know? I just use the word jobber there. Do you know what that means? Where they just put someone like pointless in the ring and just absolutely smash there to them. be beaten, basically. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You, well, when I've seen it, it's been like local yeah. wrestlers. Yeah, that is effectively the the epitome of oh, that okay. word. But yeah, so they brought Goldberg in. Um, so Goldberg had a career in the NFL. I think he played yes. for the Atlanta Falcons. He then left it. I think he had a bad injury. Couldn't carry on his NFL career, left it, got trained at WCW's power plant facility, mm. and they just knew they had something with Goldberg. Because I think WWE were trying to actually, or WWF at the time, were trying to bring Goldberg in because they saw the potential in the crossover athlete side. And WCW did very well with him by just having him mow down person after person after person, and it created this undefeated streak it got to the point where they would claim he'd have more matches than there were days. Almost so one week on Nitro, he'd have been, let's say, 25-0. and 0, And then the next week on Nitro, he's 36-0. and 0. Oh, He hasn't had that many okay. matches, but it carried on all the way to like 170-0. Right. and 0, Had a title shot for the World Championship, mm-hmm. and it just went from there. 
And you could see with the way that WWE were treating Brock Lesnar yeah. that they saw him as an equivalent of Goldberg with what they could do with him. Because okay. Lesnar himself, NCAA heavyweight champion mm-hmm. in 2000, got all the natural ability in the world, athleticism, power, strength. Yeah. And as much as people might criticise him for what he did, I think on his day he was a very good wrestler. Mm-hmm. He's a different beast now yeah. to what he was yeah. then. Because he used to have some really good matches. There's one in particular, and we won't... Well, we could see it because it was on an episode of SmackDown. It wasn't a mm-hmm. pay-per-view. He had an Iron Man match with Kurt Angle for an hour. Wow. And it was really good. An hour? Really good. Imagine Brock Lesnar going an hour now. Jesus. No. He sweats just getting to the ring. I know. I mean, I'm sure I would as well. Yeah. Because I'm a fat piece of shit. <laughs> no. But Lesnar's just, like, if he's <laughs> suffering. But anyway, that's just why okay. I thought it was interesting yeah. to hear the crowd chant Goldberg at him. Uh, Tess fights back and Lesnar retreats to the outside to avoid a big boot. Now, what did you think about Brock Lesnar? Yeah, you know, turning tail and running a little bit because I know you don't like people going outside the ring. No, to... I don't. It really does annoy me. But this worked for this match because he got got out of the ring, had a nice little pep talk from yeah. Paul Heyman, and then pumped himself up, did the little jump on the spot, yeah, but... got his boobs jumping around, and yeah, then yeah, yeah, went yeah. back in. But I don't know. Like I do normally, it really irritates me. I know. But because it wasn't for long, I'm 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 lenient. Okay. Um, but it works for this match, I think, because he, because Test was a challenge in he this was. match. He was. He was physically imposing. Like you said, yeah. he's. I think Test is six foot seven mm. around that kind of mark, and mm. uh, Brock Lesnar is about six three, six four. So he's not a small man himself. But no. Test looks like on paper yeah. his equal. Yeah. So we go back in the ring and Tess stomps a mud hole into Lesnar in the corner. Yeah. So we're starting to see uh, Lesnar get a little bit of physical yes. domination here. Which I wasn't prepared to see, I'll be honest. Because I wasn't. I'm so used to yeah. him absolutely clattering whoever he's with. It yeah. was actually quite refreshing to see a match where it did go back and forth. Yeah, and I was going to say, I've, I'm sure I've seen this match before. I think, as I mentioned to you before yeah. we started recording, I don't think I've actually seen this show from start to finish in okay. one sitting. I've seen a lot of the matches individually, so I know I've seen this at some point. Yeah. I don't remember I how remember. even it was. I remember the outcome, so I remember how the whole mm-hmm. tournament unfolded, but it was interesting to see how much offence that Tess got in. Uh, spine busted by Brock, sees him take control back, and a hard Irish whip sends Tess to the canvas. Again, it's a good visual image when yes. Lesnar is throwing something to the ring and a man of Tess size is hitting it and going yeah. down from the velocity. Nice touch. Uh, second big boot is ducked, and Lesnar hits an impressive belly to back suplex before mm-hmm. a more impressive backbreaker. Yes. He just picks Test up like oh, he is nothing. He makes it look so easy. Elevates him. Test must be 270, 280 pounds. I can't remember. They say it when they walk in, don't they? But yeah. I, I don't remember. But I, I think it's all about order. He makes it look like an absolute. It's impressive like, enough fine. holding him up in front of yeah. him, but then to elevate him, to yeah. then drop him down on the back and it not look like, oh, no. will. well, I, I couldn't pick I mean, him I up, be to, be to be fair. Him up, but... I'd like to, in my head, i go, yeah, yeah, probably hold him for a second. No. no. I'm pretty sure I couldn't. <laughs> but he does it like it's nothing, yeah. like it's child's play. That's farm strong for you. Uh, so a power slam on Tess only gets two before mm-hmm. a sloppy exchange in the corner. I don't know quite what no, was meant to happen here. But it was a bit of a mess, and I this thought was this one of the moments where I just took a nice slug, slug of my drink, put it back down, and then normality resumed. This is where I thought, ah, this is what I was expecting to happen. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then Tess hits a sidewalk slam yeah. before a pair of uh, corner clotheslines. Full Nelson slam earns Tess a two, which I thought was good because he got How block is up that in the air. What it's called? Full Nelson slam. Yes, it's when he started doing moves like this. I'm so sorry, my this my stomach. Is- it will not chain. pick up on the audio. Can I only apologise. It's fine. Um, oh yeah, I remember like obviously this part of the match, watching it, being like, "Oh, Tess can pick him up, pick him up as well." Yeah. Like it wasn't as easy, obviously, as yeah. he doesn't make it look as easy, and he's doing different moves. But I was like, oh, "I like it." It's one of those moves where Lesnar's doing the work because oh, Lesnar's yes, jumping. He does jump into it. To be fair, all you'd have to do to make that look like you've done it yeah. is be of similar height so you could get. Okay. in that move and then it's just based on right jump and right. then he does it okay. so, I, but again it looked it good. good and Lesnar's selling for it Lesnar's selling is actually good when he wants to sell he can sell yes. very well yes. very well and it never looks over the top no this this part of Lesnar I remember like when he was like this I remember being like ugh boring mm. and then I actually re-watched no, it it's good. and I was like I'm really into this this is really good I thought 
that's why and you, you probably can't see him on the shelf but I have a Brock no. Lesnar figure over there and I specifically didn't want him in the MMA gear no, you wanted, I him, wanted in this, him you wanted him in his pants which is yeah I wanted yeah. Lesnar in his pants and I got Lesnar in his pants god damn it with Hope a screaming enjoy. face yeah oh, I'm it. elated um, and then we see Tess go for the pump handle slam but uh, Brock Lesnar slips out the back and mm. that was really like seamless the mm. transition and I was thinking do you know what this match is yeah. I might be enjoying this more yes. than the one that came before it yes. and that is surprising I know so yeah uh, he slips out the back door which is good uh, so it's right sorry <laughs> sorry I'm a child I can't help it <laughs> there's a bit here so he slips out the back door then yeah. Lesnar goes to hit a German suplex and it's such a simple little thing but you don't often see it these days mm -hmm. is to counter it test hooked his leg, his leg behind because yeah. that would stop you doing it because yeah. effectively all Lesnar could do there is the... fall backwards yeah. with him on top of you yeah no I noticed that and I thought hmm that's nice. like ring psychology mm -hmm. test underrated that's is that controversial maybe I should have had that for my 12 days of yeah, Westmas maybe because for... maybe we need to watch more test well what a, what shame. a shame what a shame well we won't be watching him in the next mm -hmm. couple shows I know that Great. Then the second pump handle slam connects. Again, looks yeah, really good. Nice. Really good. Brock kicks out at two. So that was Tess's finisher. Mm. So it was that and the big boot were yeah. his main two moves. Uh, Tess counters out of a powerbomb and boots Brock's head into row eight. Like, I don't know. It, either it looked perfect or there's a slight mm. judgment miscalculation on the distance because Lesnar looked like he ate that foot. Didn't he just? Yeah. And I'm sure there's many businessmen that would pay for that kind of service in certain countries, yeah. but that didn't look pleasant. No, it did look a bit hmm, and like my a, head, wince, a wincer, if yeah. you know what I mean. And my head straight away went to, well, he punched Strowman when Strowman got overexcited. Yeah. Is he going to smack Tess? He didn't. But then that was, that was a different, like, yes. he was a newbie here, really, yes. wasn't he? Now, yeah, but he's got a temper on him. Absolutely fucking yeet him out, wouldn't he? Yeah, he would, yeah. I mean, it's funny to think that Brock Lesnar is so legitimate obviously he's got the amateur wrestling background pedigree he's got the mma background mm -hmm. as well and i remember an interview with paul Heyman where he did it i think it was in the uk for inside the ropes and they were talking about brock lesnar ending the undertaker's undefeated streak at wrestlemania and Heyman was saying it was the only person that could end the streak right. was brock lesnar and he said, and also, they had a match at WrestleMania. Do you think Lesnar couldn't just go, I'm winning this match? Mm. And there's not. Uh, and Heyman did it so well and said, there's not a single person or army that could have gone in there and stopped him from winning. No. And I was just like, oh, so good. Yeah. So good at selling it. It's the way that Heyman does this little face, like it's kind of dismissively yeah. just saying it as facts. Yeah. You can't argue it, it's facts. No. And, um, but yeah, obviously it was, it was fine in this instance. And Heyman falls to his knees mm. when it only gets to two, going, thank God, thank God, thank God. And it's just a great, great distraction, which he then follows up with an actual distraction. Right. <laughs> Honestly, I, I rolled so hard I thought I was going to be blind. Yeah. This is so dumb. Okay. This, this, for me, is when I hate people getting involved. At the side of the ring, he is genius. He doesn't... Look at... Fucking Brock Lesnar doesn't need to get involved. It's predetermined. They know who's going to win. But still, if I slapped Test back then, he's not going to fucking fall over. Honestly. Might cream himself, you I don't know. know. Oh. <laughs> oh. 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 <laughs> that just, that, this is when I watched it and I went, this is stupid. Stupid. I, Heyman was never... Oh, well, no, I guess he was. As a manager, Heyman often used to get involved quite yeah. a lot. Um, his gimmick back in the day uh, in AWA going into WCW, when I look, when I saw his age back then, he was like 27 when he started in ECW, and he still looked 48. Yeah. But he used to have this big cellular phone. I'm going to call it because it was one of those oh, brick the ones. massive ones. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and he used to use that to clock people with. Makes sense. Fine. Well, it won't work but now. Not He's your hand. with a Nokia. Flip phone. Yeah, <laughs> just a, a nice phone. Flip phone. Just make a, what the fuck's that? This, oh, this just was stupid. Didn't need to be done either, I'll be honest. It was one of two things for managers, though, isn't it, when mm -hmm. it comes to distractions. The guys would get physically involved. The women would use titillation, shall we yeah. say, to distract. Um, and, yeah, so he distracted Tess. Oh, and to be fair, if you look at the way the match was unfolding, yeah, it kind of made sense because Tess was having his way. The distraction made sense. Yeah. Not the actual distraction itself. Right. I, I, would, if, I would have been happier if he'd have grabbed his feet 
Yeah. Stay outside the ring, hold his feet so he can't do whatever. Then Brock finishes. Yeah. Boom, one, two, three. Makes sense. Don't hit him. Yeah. Because if I'm... if Right, what you should have done, right. in my opinion, Fancy booking. Let's if go. he wants to do the slap, do the slap. Tess does nothing, just looks at him, goes to punch him or something, and then, oh, surprise attack from Brock from behind. Bosh, finished, okay. done. So what eventually happens is Tess... Sorry, I just revealed how it all finishes, but never mind. Well, no, but Tess, you know, turns around, walks into the F5 that Lesnar hits, yep. and nice Lesnar's F5, on his way but... to the finals. Yeah. Just, I loved that match until the last 30 seconds. Yeah, I knew you would. As soon as there's, like, outside in- interference or you know, too much outside the ring, yeah. that's, to me, uh, you're laughing at whenever you see Tamina come out. Yes. Because you know how I'm feeling about yes. it. Yes, <laughs> oh. We then go backstage once oh. more. Freddo yet? I don't have any. You finished the Freddos? You not replenish them yet? No. Oh, no. I'm trying to be good because it's January, so I just had alcohol <laughs> instead. Brilliant. So we see Jonathan Coachman and he goes into yeah. the Royal Locker Room. Yeah. So I'm Coach... we'd see someone, in, you know, in a towel, who knows? Brilliant. <laughs> I'm such a well, perv. Imagine if we saw Bubba, <laughs> Bubba in a towel. How would you feel? Uh, let's, be, like, let's move on because that's not what I <laughs> was meaning. Well, why would you not want to see Bubba Ray so Dudley in a towel? Maybe Jeff Hardy just be hanging around. No. Bubba Ray Dudley. Hanging out though, with his wang out. With his sausage. Just... <laughs> Right, but he's got his hair done up in one of those towels as well. I imagine yeah. that would be the oh, way yeah. Bubba would come out of the shower. Yeah. So Coach bumps into Bubba yeah. and asks who he thinks will win King of the Ring. Like we give a flying fuck what Bubba thinks on this particular topic. But I actually quite enjoyed his response. Okay. I didn't need it, but I thought what? it was a thorough response. It because wasn't just a, I, I should be there and I'm the best. And I mean, it is, but it's articulated to me a little bit better. So I let him off. So effect- it's better than the next bit that follows. Well, yeah. Okay, so effectively it's because we've got two raw guys in the final. Yeah. So we know it's going to be a raw person that wins. Bubba Ray, you know, says that he thinks Brock Lesnar will be just too much for RVD because of his size, Which power, is what even though he's got an allegiance. Thinking. Yeah. But then again, Brock was so new in the game, mm-hmm. RVD wouldn't have been too surprising at that time, I don't think. Um, and then Bubba kind of turns it into his own promo about, he said, yeah, well, I'm going to make my impact somewhere else. And I was like, you didn't join Impact in TNA for another few years yet. Oh, so, I see. See what I did there. I, I do. Clever. I would not even have thought about that. No, I know. That's why I had to mansplain it a little bit for yeah. me. <laughs> um, and so he said, yeah, he wants to earn a title shot and make an impact elsewhere. Mm-hmm. I was hoping that would be the last we'd see of him on this card. It mm. was not. Then some blonde haired chode. Who the fuck is this guy? I have no fucking idea. Don't remember him at all. I was like, who is the guy with the really long spiky hair? Yeah, I put some blonde haired chode, so I don't know his actual name. But did you notice that Christian wearing his nip vest? Yes, I did. It's uh, the nip vest. Yeah, he catches Lance Storm and Christian leaving the SmackDown locker yeah. room. Storm is very displeased. Very, very displeased yeah. that it's an all American final. As not only is it just oh. two Raw guys, it's not two SmackDown guys, but it shows the uh, the anti-Canadian agenda. Oh, honestly, this was a snooze. Just like, I mean, the whole thing mm. with back in the day with WWF is like anything non-American yeah. is evil, is bad, is rock, the heels. And they used to do it with like the USSR, they'd do it with Russia, they mm. would do it with like Samoans as well. Like anything Damn. that was fair game. And they go, oh, well, what haven't we done yet? Canadians? Canadians are like the most inoffensive people. And yeah. I mean that as a genuine compliment. I think they're lovely for the mm-hmm. most part. I'm sure there's exceptions. There always are. But they're just so polite. And they're, oh no, they're the heels now. Yeah, it's weird. Just because they're Canadian. Us, but we didn't need to talk to them. No, no, we didn't. We didn't need to speak to Bubba Ray, to be fair. Well, true. And then the next bit, I got really angry. <laughs> <laughs> well, Christian says there's a bias in WWE against Canadian athletes. Oh. Who won uh, King of the Ring last year? Stupid. So stupid. Who won King Canadian? Of Edge. Yeah. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Yeah. Your brother slash best friend. Yeah. I don't know what situ- what their relationship was at this point. I just oh, I, I know I know why they're doing it, but it's yeah. just like it's not necessary. Yeah. And also fact check. Yeah. Christian acting like a dipshit with his nips out. Yeah. And that's what and basically it happened. It was out. It was out. It yeah. was um yeah. It's it, that one, isn't it? It's, it was about four CDs. Yeah. I reckon you could have put the CDs on there and been four would have been quite yeah. sturdy on on the old biscuit. And then we go to Cole and Taz, and this made me laugh. Oh, this is so stupid. This made me laugh a lot, because I thought, oh shit, they're not even allowed a table. No. They go, you, you bitches, go and stand. You can stand in the rafters. Yeah, tell us what you think about something, and then don't do commentary on it. Fuck you. Do you know what I can't bear, though? It's not just him. It's everyone that does it. People that wear sunglasses, fucking inside. Not for nothing. 
honestly, I hate it. He's wearing a suit and sunglasses. Yeah. He's not the only person in this show that does it that annoys yeah. me either. I hate it when people wear sunglasses inside. It's just the, the nothing, nothing. Oh, oh it's just... It's just so irritating. I, like I said, he was so good in ECW and he's just such a bitch in here. <laughs> it really is. I just feel, yeah, I feel bad for the guy if he didn't annoy me so much in here. And, yeah, we then go back to uh, the next match. Yes. Now, I didn't know how you'd feel about this match because there's a lot of factors to kind of... There's a lot to unbox okay. on this. First of all, we've got your boy. We've got hey, the Hurricane. Always happy. Finally he's, in the match. He's always my pick for surprise Royal Rumble entries. You can't have him this year. <laughs> Why? You can't have him this year because it's not a surprise. He turns up every other fucking year. He's been in the Royal Rumble more times than John Cena. Contract. <laughs> Well, yeah. So he's got um, defending his cruiserweight title yes, against Jamie Noble, yes. who we actually mentioned re- uh, recently. I think it was actually in the Evolution paper when I was talking to him as James Gibson. Mm-hmm. But when he wrestled in WWE, it was Jamie Noble. Mm-hmm. Um, I think he'd been in the company for about a year or so at that point. I don't know if he was put on a developmental deal, but he was basically the right size because he doesn't wrestle like a cruiserweight no. as you would stereotypically think of one, but he's of the stature to be in that division. And he's alongside his uh, girlfriend, Nydia. Oh, fuck me, honestly. Was that a request or was no. that just a... Oh, okay, right. This was... I'm not one for PDAs, really. I don't mind them every now and again. Right. But I don't want to see this much saliva, ever. And PDA, for those uneducated um, out there... Public displays of affection. <laughs> yeah. I knew what you meant. But... I just don't like... I know it's a story, and I get that. But also, she won... Did she win tough enough? She was definitely in tough enough. I can't remember if she won. Oh, was she a co-winner? She, I can't remember, but I, I'm i sure she won it. And then I look and I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? Just sucking face. Well, I mean, if they, I mean, I'm not going to lie. If they gave me that job and it was someone I could choose, then fine. But What if you were put with Jamie Noble? Oh, he's far too short for me. Yeah. His pocket rocket. Yeah. No, he'd no. probably come up to my, yeah. Just. I'm up to your what? <laughs> I was going to say, stop. What were stop. you going to say because you caught yourself? No. no what no. were you going to say instead of that? Just probably be, he'd be a height of my van. But... <laughs> <laughs> Let's just move on. I just thought you were going to say a worse word for chest there. So oh, I wasn't no. expecting that. No. But he does bring something to the party. Mm-hmm. A bit of flannel, a bit of denim, the, bit of country the bumpkin. Up. I'm all right with the get up. Yeah, I bet you are. <laughs> yes, all right. It was jorts. <laughs> Those jorts are fine. Brilliant. Because they're like loose. They're actual jorts. Yep. They're loose. They're not like Cut off jeans. the 30 years later, not 30, but do you know what I mean? The John Cena dad jorts. It's like two years later, if I that. know, but it's. <laughs> no. But before we even get into mm. the in ring portion of the match, yes. uh, it's very much a let's all open season on Nydia. Oh, God. So the chants on there were awful. I didn't even think I wrote down the chants, but we start with Cole. Oh. Calling Nydia Noble's freak of a girlfriend yes. and a vindictive witch. Yeah. This poor girl, Strong. honestly. I mean, I know I've just absolutely bashed her for sucking face. Yeah. But the co- the comments from commentary and the crowd, yeah. I'd be crying backstage. But, but imagine being like uh, Vince McMahon go, well done, Nydia. Yeah, you weren't tough enough. <laughs> what <laughs> you're going to be doing is sucking face and being called a bitch. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Welcome to WWE, pal. <laughs> That's just ridiculous. That's such a good impression. It's really not, but it's about as good as I can do it, to be fair. I said Holly will be ecstatic with Hurricane being in a match, because really apart from am. a battle royal, that's all we've had of I him really, so far. I was, honestly, I was so happy. If you'd have seen my face, I had a big old cheesy smile. What did you think of the, because um, it did the backstage part where it was showing how this story came to be. So yeah. effectively, Nydia was Hurricane's ex-girlfriend. Yeah. I don't remember this. No, I don't remember. She unmasked him, but they did the yeah. bit where he was pretending to be the reporter trying yes, to find out who the hurricane is. I remember is. that as well. Yeah. I'm What's up with that? Always here for it. Yeah. It's because it he funny. can do no wrong in my eyes. Oh, he can do wrong, but I thought this was actually quite good. Yeah. What do you make of Noble's hearty cousin fucking accent? <laughs> Stop. Uh, it's oh, so yuck, 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 yuck. <laughs> Doesn't sound like goofy. It does. <laughs> You're cracking Come out the impressions. <laughs> Just... Your impressions today are top notch. Thank you. <laughs> Just it, yeah. So they call him the king of the trailer park. Mm. I said it seems fitting. Fair play. I don't mind fine. that. If that's the gimmick you're going with, yeah. fine. Uh, Taz and Cole are not even allowed to commentate, which I thought no. again. It, I don't know why it amused me. It shouldn't. Yeah. I should have felt bad for them, but I didn't care. Maybe if he took his fucking sunglasses off. 
Oh no, he never does that. It's, oh, it's, it makes me so. It's angry. because he's got little pin eyes. So angry. It's just that's why because he looks like a alien. Okay. It's like a pumpkin that's just had two pin pricks put in it. Okay. And that wasn't because it's orange either. That was just that I was just thinking of a circular type thing. Um, I just put here. What the fuck did Lola say about Nydia? And I don't know if you caught this because I actually rewound it three times oh, okay. and still couldn't work out no, what he I said. Don't know. But it sounded like he said to Jr. Lick her out. Oh. And then Jr. went, I'd rather not. Oh. And I swear to God, I rewound that three times. If anyone's listening to this and can vouch for what was said. Yeah. Because I could not. No, I didn't even. Nothing sounds it. like that, that I could oh. try and extrapolate oh. as being what was actually said. Um, but I mean, there's a job for everyone, I guess, isn't there? So Hurricane dumped Nydia is basically how we ended up here, fine. Uh, mm. The bell rings and Hurricane overpowers Noble into the corner with a collar and elbow tie-up, showing that little men can be strong as well. Yeah. I say little men, I don't actually know how tall or know. short Hurricane is, but he doesn't strike me as particularly short. No. I think he might be under six foot, but I don't think yeah. he's miles under it. I'd, I'd guess at 5'10". Yeah, yeah, that sounds probably about right. Uh, JR and King immediately start uh, talking about other title matches later in the night. So this one Yeah, is... this is the beer match. This is your... I think they've keyed this up to be your go get your bevies match. I would not leave at this point. I'd be sending you because I'd be watching Hurricane. <laughs> well, at the age of 13, I might have struggled <laughs> no, I mean, if this beer. was If this was now... Yeah. No, I get what you're saying. Even though whether I wanted to see the match was irrelevant. I'd be like, I'm no, I'm staying. <laughs> Got to make it worth, worth, worth my while. Brilliant. King says, it's all about survival of the fattest. I mean fittest. Sorry, Molly. Ah, oh, honestly. This poor bitch is catching strays. Honestly. It's not even got to that. And I'm not even going to go into no, we, that no. match yet because no, I, no. I've got a few comments yep. for, for the king too. of Memphis on this one. I put fucking outrageous. Yeah. I know, again, I'm sure he's being told to do this. Yeah. But it's coming out of him. Mm-hmm. And because it's him, he's the problem mm-hmm. to me. Like I said, but again, they're not focusing on the current match. No. So, as a viewer at home, I get I grant the people in the crowd at the arena can't hear what the commentators no. are saying. But at home, I'm thinking, why should I, why do I care? Yeah, I don't care. Yeah, it is odd. And when you think about the title matches on paper, this is probably the one I'd have been most looking forward to. Yeah, there's only three on the card. The True. other two are shit. Yes. Spoiler. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, no, I, I don't know. I just felt bad. It was odd. It was odd. We start off uh, with a solid mat exchange between the two as King asks JR if he lived in a mobile home. And again, <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm just tuning into the commentary. It's, I noted some all commentary in this one purely because it shocked me to my very core. Yeah, well, I might have missed a, a few. Mm. but So if you think I've missed it, do shout out. But I've okay. got one thing that the, the oh, crowd I wonder. Shot. Oh, okay. Okay. She's a crack whore. That's the one. Yeah, of course it is. Chance at Nydia. Uh, that's actually harsh. my second next note, but the one before that is Noble counters out of Chokeslam but runs into a super kick. Mm-hmm. Which is nice. I think yeah. Hurricane throws a perfectly yeah. well balanced kick, but no noise no. to hit it. No. But anyway, different era. Back to the commentary again. Oh, I wonder, I'm literally waiting to see if you're going to comment on the same thing that yeah, I am, and I think is, you I've are. just read it. I, I forgot what I put until mm-hmm. I just read it now. It's about age. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So JR is asked by King if he would like to have a long hot shower with Nydia. JR says, uh, stop. She's young enough to be my daughter. King yeah. says, so, what's the problem? Uncle Jerry. Mm, Uncle Jerry. Starting to show your true noncy colours here. Oh, God. Like, I mean... It was it was just too much. And then it's like, yeah, she might be young, but she's got experience. It's like, give over. He would. Give over. Well, I'm sure he would. But also... Let's not. But again, for someone who's... Why do you uh, need this on, rec- on record? Like, it's on... No. But someone like who's it. been accused of noncing, maybe stay away from... I don't think you've got... It's like when... I'm trying to think of a, a comparison for this, like when people get involved and they just... They shouldn't. It's like, um, okay, when Michael Barrymore stepped in on uh, another celebrity getting shade for something they did, mm. and someone on Twitter went back to him and said... Mate, someone's found dead in your swimming pool. It's a bum full the of glass drugs. houses, isn't it? So, yeah, maybe, s- maybe glass, sit out of this one. Fresh stones, yeah. And I don't know if that is that like a. This is going to be a bad comparison, but oh to me, it's the same way of like hiding in plain sight. A bit like with Jimmy Savile. I'm not saying King has done you're not anything. Draw- yeah, you're not drawing the comparison. You're just saying 
it's like, well, it's, I've got nothing to fear. Yeah, I'm untouchable. I don't know. It just came across as massively arrogant to me. At the time, I think I wouldn't have thought anything of it. Just as a female, I did not like it. Mm-hmm. I don't mind a lot of stuff. Do you know what I mean? As we listen to evolu- evolution, I'm definitely not like a feminist. But I just think the comments of... I think it's because JR said like she's as old as my daughter or something or she's younger than my daughter and it's the comment of that doesn't matter and like, you can Ooh. tell jr doesn't like no. this type of stuff no. he's, anything he's saying on this he's being he tries to, to shut it down as well he literally quickly. said stop yeah and can i ask you a question then and this isn't to try and oh, put gosh. you in a corner okay but okay it's king said this yes what if it was let's say nigel mcginnis said this <laughs> I thought you were going to say Corey. Um, Corey, I mean, half his age is questionable. Yeah. Uh, same with Nigel, but um, my point stands. No, I still would... I think it's just the, it's the comment of the daughter, like... Oh, the whole daddy culture. Oh, I fucking hate that. You know, I don't like that. It's just... No. I, it wouldn't matter to me who said it. It still That's would right make answer. me feel yeah. weird. Because I wasn't sure, and like I said, I wasn't trying to catch you out, but you no. know, you see this... I saw a, another thing on social media recently where it was a cartoon of a lady being chatted up in the office, Mm. the exact words that came out of this, shall we say, less than attractive Mm -hmm. guy's mouth. Oh, what, put it into an other guy's mouth who's like a 10 out of 10, Yeah, and that it's acceptable. Exactly, Mm -hmm. and she was like, oh, thank you very much. It's just... No, I'm not like that. No, no, that's good. Good. Correct answer. Thank you. That's all right. Uh, Nydia distracts Hurricane, who follows does. her to the outside, mm. and uh, he runs into a hell of a clothesline, which I quite yes. liked, because Noble bounced out of nowhere Absolutely. to blindside him. Very good. For a cruiserweight match, I'm expecting something more high-octane than what we got in this one. Yeah. It doesn't yes. have to be all high-flying moves, but just a quicker pace. Yes. That's what it I want. It was quite slow. If this is a variety show, and mm-hmm. it's got something for everything, I don't think this show delivered on the right mix yeah. for me. Uh, so yeah the pace slows down and Noble wears down Helms with a choke over the ropes mm. and abdominal stretch which I again not expecting to see in this type of match small package by Hurricane not that one <laughs> gets a two yep and I put here King needs to shut the fuck up old man just wants to fuck anything young and female because he's still going on I stopped making comments oh I'd stopped I tried to block it out I think by this point I will be honest with you I had to stop this match twice and walk oh, off because you got annoyed because I was getting annoyed and I knew that my notes were going to just yeah. be yeah. so after those comments I wrote I was like that's my yeah. putting a line under yeah, fair. Lawler on this one I think I'm pretty good at blanking it out mm. so after that I was like no no let's just focus on what's actually going on here yeah I said he's constantly on the prowl to get his dick wet Sleeper hold by Noble, and oh. I've lost all interest in this match. Oh, sleeper hold. Sleeper hold send me to sleep. It's not the worst sleeper hold I've done. <laughs> oh, no, either. it's not. It's absolutely I not. I cannot wait to get to that because I've got <laughs> I've set you up with a line on this. We get a jumping neck breaker by Hurricane and a middle rope. What's this move called? Where he's standing on the middle rope. Yeah. He jumps over Jamie Noble, grabs him by the neck, oh. brings him to the ground. Mm-hmm. Think video shop that's no longer in business. It's a buster. It's like a, a blockbuster. There you go. Oh. Yeah, exactly the name of the show. I was going to say, what were you going to say? A I thought it was, no, I was, no, I knew it was blockbuster, but I didn't know the move was a blockbuster. I thought it was going to be like a neck buster or something. No, uh, yeah, middle right blockbuster. Fair play. Um, German suplex by Noble, which is you don't often see in cruiserweight matches, nope. but it was fine. Yeah, fine. Didn't hate it. it. But Hurricane hits the reverse DDT at the second time of asking. He tried mm-hmm. to do it earlier. I don't quite know what to call that because it's one that um, Finn Balor does these days as well yeah. where he kind of drives the point of the elbow and I'm sure there's a move for it but I just called it reverse DDT here. And then Hurricane goes to retrieve his cape but Nydia swiftly snatches it back and I quite like that. Yeah. Because it was I've, done seamlessly. In, in this, I'm like, of course. Of course he needs his cape. Of course he does. He's a superhero. Just do it after. No, oh, he's a superhero. Honestly. How does it, that's his identity, Holly. I mean, I know, but at the same time, I was like, just focus on one job at a time. Now, this next bit might have been the nastiest move of the night for me. Oh, honestly, when... how this guy did not break his leg. Yeah, so Noble is suplex right out of the ring, and I winced. So yep. normally when you see them mm. go back against the ropes, and I'm, I think this was the intention. Yeah. I don't think there was a, a mess up. Normally you see, so Noble would go down, but they'd still be in the suplex position, and Hurricane would flip out yes. after him, which is what I was expecting. So when he went, yeah. do do Oh, I literally s- sat there, eyes wide, and went, has he broken his leg? 
also because he's a small guy. That's like, yeah. that like him Heavy. jumping off the Empire State Building. Heavy. That was massive. It didn't look like a particularly nice landing, but I guess it went as well as it possibly could have done. Mm-hmm. We go. Oh, I wasn't done with King. I lied. Oh dear. This line for me was the worst one, and oh, I've heard him say it before. I did. I I clearly wasn't listening because I've got no no notes on commentary now. You are only as old as the women you feel. Oh, I see. Thoughts. I mean, we've all said that, but we're not. As in, like, the per- not woman, but, like, oh, you're only as old as the person you feel because it's aimed at yourself, isn't it? And then you make a joke about, yeah, but oh, when like, it- if it was you, you'd be like, oh, well, Em is however old Em is. Yeah. Like, but he's, I'm not allowed to touch he's her. a predator. He is a predator, and I think that's what makes it worse. Mm. Uh, best to leave the math alone on that one, you nonce, is what I put oh, here. Gosh. So I think oh, that might God. be the last bullet. <laughs> okay. Hurricane hits a very nice swinging net breaker from the top rope. Yes. That was, that was very pretty. That. And then Nydia distracts oh, the ref. Oh, she can fuck off. Honestly. <laughs> <laughs> Noble charges, but misses Hurricane and sends Nydia flying. Mm, so good. you probably celebrate. Yeah. I think I missed it, but she kissed him to distract him earlier, didn't yes, she? Yes, she did, but it also didn't really look like... No. I don't... Mm. No, I enjoyed just, that. I'm just not going to send you. But the choke slam, the Hurricane hit. It was yes. a good choke slam. Yes, it was. It was a very good choke slam. Only gets a two. Of course. Hurricane gets crotched. So that's the fourth time we've seen someone get crotched in yep. the space of three matches. Yep. And he's hit with a power bomb, mm. and I thought, oh, this isn't going to finish it, mm. and then it did. Mm-hmm. So Nidia pushes the foot off the rope. So the way that Helms lands oh, near the ring, no. it was actually well done. I didn't like it. No, as an I ending. didn't like it, but it makes sense because he landed in a heap near the ropes. Yeah, he just like about folds hooks, himself in half. Yeah, just about hooks his left foot on the bottom rope. Mm-hmm. Nidia, who'd been knocked to the floor, just pops up, pushes his foot off the rope yeah. last second. Ref doesn't see it. It does make sense. It does. That's annoying. But that's the ref technically didn't do his job, not because he didn't see what Nidia did. Hurricane's arm was under the rope. That still classes as a rope break. Oh, does if it? If you break the line, oh, I see. That still so classes you outside line rather the than ring. grabbing the ring. Yeah, that's because obviously grabbing oh, it. You know what I mean? Ropes. Yeah, grabbing it is the the thing you want to do because it's visible. Yes. But if oh, you get your okay. limb under the rope completely, well, not completely, but near enough um, where yeah. you can see most of it is under, which it was oh, with his arm. Did not know that. The ref should have spotted that, and it shouldn't have been counted. But again, that that completely yeah. fucks the finish up. So yeah. I get it. And we see uh, a new cruiserweight champion is crowned, and oh. Nydia pounces like Holly at a works Christmas do. Stop! Oh my god, I can't believe you said that. What I said? What? Oh my god, why would you say that? Well, no, I was going to leave it there. You could have just <laughs> oh. like ignored it oh and moved god. on. Oh my god! Am I wrong? No. <laughs> <laughs> one time. What well, it was one, one time. time that happened. It was. Um, but I didn't do what she then did. Like, can we just? There was no. No, I didn't. No. Okay, fine, just carry on. Right, so we're going to move on from that one. Mm. Uh, that's the end of that match. Mm-hmm. I'm so happy I got that down. Uh, and you then we did. see The Rock arriving earlier in the night on Sunday Night Heat. He's inside. Take your fucking sunglasses He's off. He's The Rock, he can do what he likes. No, I'm angry. No, you roll and shut your mouth is what he would say. So that. Okay, yeah, he probably would. He would. <laughs> he doesn't care about my opinion. And then we go to another interview. We see Eddie Guerrero oh, backstage. Oh, yes. So this is odd this okay. interview we're in a good eddie period for me in terms of look with the kind of oh, okay. wet mullet not... but he wasn't like was was he still like new here not new but had he recently only come to wwf so no because he wasn't liked at this point no he wasn't so the so he came over to wwf in 2000 had they already was. done the lawn mowers by this point he was never on the lawn mowers. Oh, he wasn't? He wasn't one of the Because there's a sign in the crowd that Eddie says, Eddie Mowed My Lawn. No, that's just pure racism. Oh. Because he's Mexican. That's purely oh, what shit, that I is. thought it was part of the that gimmick that you've told me about that I've not seen. The Mexicals. No, the Mexicals were oh, super crazy, sorry. who you saw in ECW. Yeah. Psychosis and Juventud Guerrero. Oh. Eddie was never involved in that, but the whole joke was, oh, he's Mexican, therefore he does cheap labour, he does my lawn. Oh my God. Yeah. It's like the same way that they chant at the FBI in ECW, where's my pizza? Because they're oh. Italians. It's kind of, yeah. Oh, yeah. right. Sorry, I totally misinterpreted that then. No. it's Well, to be fair, the Mexicals as a thing, well, that was as racist as the whole thing. They turned that yeah. into a full-on gimmick. God. But anyway, we see Mrs. Goldust, a.k.a. Terry Runnels, oh. uh, do the interview. So I believe the backstory with her is that she used to be a makeup artist mm. backstage at events, and she eventually got into a relationship with... Uh, Gold Dust, who was going under oh, the name wow. Dustin Runnels, the natural at the time. 
got married um, mm-hmm. and she was apportioned the blame certainly by Dusty Rhodes as to why him and his son didn't talk for about three four years oh wow because I think they were supposed to meet up and have a day of golf or something yeah. but Terry wasn't well so Dustin decided to stay home with her and Dusty thought that she was manipulating him right and it, to be fair, everyone in wrestling think everyone's out to get them. Mm-hmm. There's always an ulterior motive and another angle that people are trying to play. Whether it was or wasn't, I don't know. But um, obviously that they're not married now. That relationship ended a long time ago. Oh. But that's Terry Runnels. So you, yeah. you recognise her I from recognize her being her, yeah. a crap, crap wrestler. Yeah, well, well I, actually, I actually only have seen her do like bikini matches and bra and panties That's stuff. all she can do. Right, okay, fair play. I, I never thought she was attractive. No, she got no. very skinny eyebrows. Yeah, but that was the thing at that time. I yeah. vaguely remember. Even that. Trish had skinny eyebrows. It was, as well. it was the thing. It's not good. It though, really it? was. No, and it screwed many of us girls over. Because... But you never fell foul of that, did no, you? No, I mean I had very thin eyebrows, but I never did what they did. And like, because some people would. So I was analysing your eyebrows. They're no, they're, they're, nice. they're a bit bushier now. No, they're nice. Um, thank you, thanks. Um, some people at school literally shaved their eyebrows off and drew them on. And drew them on. I don't get that. And I was like, "What the fuck?" And now you've got people like—is it Cara Delevingne? Mm, who's the, got the massive the caterpillars? Yeah, the one. She remi- yeah. It reminds me of—is um, it Dodgeball? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> a bit of a unibrow. Yes. But yeah, I mean, yeah, it's just funny it's how nice. tastes change. Yeah, but that's what I noticed from you, that. Interview. You impressed? That I got her name right, I'm by the way. Tres impressed. I think it's because I asked the question when she was on TV because I saw her on adverts oh, all see. over the place. So I had to ask my missus who mm-hmm. she was, and because it's quite a unique name, it's just stuck for Is me. It? So the Eddie Guerrero interview mm, made me tired. So effectively, Terry's <laughs> asking Eddie, "How is he feeling confident yeah. going into this match?" And then Latino Heat just strokes her cheek very uncomfortably. Yeah, weird to start with. But, but always Latino Heat. So he can do what he likes. He can do. He can do what he likes with uh, the can females. Lie, apparently, cheat, steal, 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 steal your girl, cheek. stroke your cheek, <laughs> stroke anything he likes, strike one out. Oh my god! Um, and then we go to the the backstage package to explain how this match came. So they don't really explain it in the the interview, mm-hmm. but they can say so. This is what happened, and Ben Warren Eddie are effectively blaming Ric Flair mm. for Stone Cold walking out on WWE. Right. Okay. I can give you an interesting story as to why he actually did walk out of WWE at this time, which I'll, I'll get to in a second. Um, why Benoit and Eddie cared about this, yeah. I don't know. But I think Eddie was in, on paper supposed to have a match with Stone Cold right. on his pay-per-view. So I think they mentioned it later on. L- like linked it loosely. Yeah, and they've had to kind of scramble around last minute. Because Stone Cold did legitimately walk out yeah. of WWE uh, mid-contract because he didn't oh, okay. agree with something. So the reason why he left was because... They wanted him on Raw to lose to Brock Lesnar. Oh. And Stone Cold went, no. Mm-hmm. He's, and it was... He's, he's been interviewed about it, about it since, and he said he went about it the wrong way, but he stands by the principle of what he said. It wasn't that he was saying, there's no circumstances I'm going to lose to Brock Lesnar. It's like, don't have it out of the blue on a Raw, bang, he just beats me, that's it. Yeah. If you want him to beat me, build to it, and then have yeah. him beat me. But what he actually did was... No, fuck you, Steve out, oh, and then see. walked out of WWE. So that's why he was persona non grata for a while okay. in uh, WWE. Um, but yeah, that's the real reason oh. why he left, and it was around this time. Learn something new every day. There you go. And then Eddie starts shouting out every member of his extended family, and oh, I'm wondering yeah. exactly how many drugs he was on at this moment. Honestly, this made me exhausted. And when I say I'm tired, it wasn't like bored, but mm. I was exhaust mentally exhausted watching this because I was like this makes no sense hey, Chavo Mando oh. little Ray Ray oh cousin amigo honestly like, it's like please just stop I appreciate that sounds like Rob Schneider a little bit again but it's yeah it's just the way it's just too much but again I know that he was he had a lot of issues at this point because he was let go oh. by, do you remember I said how he went away and then came yes. back and was intercontinental champion and then still did a show oh. for Ring of Honor it wasn't too long after this that right. he was gone okay I've realised I didn't answer your initial question. So he'd been in oh, yes. WWF for a while. So he came over as part of the Radicals, they mm. were called, in 2000 with Dean Malenko, yes. Chris Benoit and Perry Saturn. Oh, they all I came see. over from WCW yeah. at the same time. All their contracts were mm-hmm. up at the same time. And they all felt like they were underappreciated and not being pushed right because of their fairly small stature given mm-hmm. the wrestling yeah. landscape. Eddie early on I don't know if it was his debut or the second week after he 
Um, Because what they did was they would sit front row in the crowd and then they jumped over the barrier and started beating up WWF Uh, wrestlers. And I think it was in one of these instances where they jumped over the barrier so they're still all wearing their their normal clothes. Um, I want to say he actually hit it on Billy Gunn, I think. But he went to hit the frog splash and when he landed, his elbow popped out the side. So you could literally see as he landed, his elbow just jumped out to the side and he was like, oh my God. So he was, he oh, lost all momentum I see. right away and he was out for a good while from it. And this is when he started to get back on mm-hmm. drugs. I don't know if he was ever fully off them, but this became like a I real see. issue, which then led to him being released mm-hmm. later. Okay. So he had been in there a while. So this is right. two years after the fact. So they're all aware of him. Okay. Guerrero says that he's in the prime of his career, whereas Flair mm. is a spent force, and that's effectively the end of this interview yeah. segment. There's a long way about going about it, but I think it showed that the match was very much last minute. Yeah. We go to the match now. Yeah. Ric Flair against Eddie Guerrero. Thoughts? I thought I would hate this. <laughs> I was like, I don't, because I've, uh, I don't know, like, I don't remember watching many Ric Flair matches and enjoying it. Mm. Because he's old. Yeah. But then, actually, when I looked at it, I was like, he was 53 here. And I was like, that's compared to like some of the guys that wrestle now, I ain't that old. It is old. He just looks like a leather sofa. Yeah, I mean, the skin is an issue. Him and Hogan have been in the sunbeds too long. Yeah. But... It looks like, you know, when you cook meat, slow roasted, yes. and then it's still got the skin on, then you just peel, you peel that the skin off, off, and it's like, mm. yeah. Yes. Fall off the bone meat. So I thought, oh, this is going to be absolutely shit. But when he came out and the tr- the crowd cheered him, it kind of made me like, oh, what am I missing here? It's a space odyssey. So Flair was brought into the company. It wasn't with the invasion, because again, he would have been so good in yeah. the invasion. Um, he was brought in uh, to say that basically Shane had sold Raw. Yeah. And he'd bought it. So he was in charge of Raw. Vince mm. was in charge of SmackDown. So the very initial draft was done with them being the two heads. Oh, okay. Then he eventually lost, I think it was a street fight to Vince McMahon. So Vince McMahon got ownership of everything again, right. so Flair went back to being a wrestler. Because Flair still wanted to wrestle. Yeah. I don't think Vince particularly wanted him to, but no. that's where it ended up going. And Ric Flair and Eddie Guerrero actually had a, a... They definitely had one match in WCW. I think it was over the United States title, and it was mm. good. Oh, okay. I think it was good anyway. I'd have to go back and yeah. watch it, but I recall it being good. Okay. So, again, I was looking forward to this. Mm-hmm. And there's an interesting twist that involves you and me oh. about this match. Okay. I, I didn't like the way you looked when I said that. But I'm like, in my head, I'm like, should I know this? Uh, you will when I explain okay. it. Okay. So, do you remember when we did our Mount Rushmore's for yes. 12 Days of Rushmore's? Mm-hmm. Flair was on mine, Guerrero was on yours. Oh. Battle of the R- Mount Rushmore's. Oh, my God, Yeah. yeah. But if I could pick Eddie, it wouldn't be this Eddie. <laughs> Can we just clarify? You pick the cheek steel. Yeah, later. absolutely. Okay, fair. Uh, yeah, his promo work was much better then. Yeah. But a lot of his in-ring stuff is just he's always been good at that. So I don't think any era from that side of things is is bad. I said two of the best of all time going one on one, and then I said about the Mount Rushmore face-off between us. Prime wet mullet and gear for Eddie. Mm-hmm. This is the the red tights. Yes. You see, like people like Sasha Banks have paid homage yeah. to this gear, and there we homage. go, homage. The word featured get it again, in. unintentional as yeah. well. And I said, Flair looking very good given yes, his age. Absolutely, fifty three. I'll be time. well happy. Yeah, I bet he would. And no, I wouldn't. He would try though with you, wouldn't no, he? No, you wouldn't. know he would. I mean, no. with him in the baby arm, you know, he's trying to get oh, everything. God, he's trying to get it. everything. Stop. Guerrero mocks the Flair strut early yeah. on two occasions and woos in the most horrendous yes. ways I've heard on this yeah. show. And that's not including a woman who screams later in the show. Flair reverses Eddie in the corner and explodes his chest with a chop, sending Eddie out of the ring. Now, Eddie's gone out of the ring here in retreat. How did you find this one as a compared no. to him? You didn't like this one? No. I like this one. I like both <laughs> of them because they worked for different yeah. reasons. I mean, I get it's, it's annoying because I get it. And it does make sense, but still, I'm just like, just get in, hurry up. <laughs> so Eddie's playing more of a cowardly hill. Yeah. And in, because of that, it works, especially when Eddie does it, because he's just so such a good craftsman. And then he returns a couple of chops of his own, but then as soon as Flair gets in, Flair's just land differently. You can hear mm-hmm. the noise. They're epic. 
Very good. And you see later on, Eddie's chest yeah. is like blood blistered yeah. from, from these blows. It's obviously not going to feel nice. There's no way to sugarcoat that. It was nice to see, actually, for me, a crowd of people watching. Yeah. There's no, obviously, because back then, if you wanted to take a photo, you could see digital cameras and like disposable cameras, but you wouldn't get out your phone because you wouldn't have a camera on your phone at mm-hmm. this point. And for me, actually, just watching, I was like, it's actually nice to see a whole crowd interested because they can't be distracted by anything else. Yeah, I think that's more of a indictment on society. Mm-hmm. I saw it, and we see it every year, to be fair, um, the New Year's Eve firework display in London. Yes. And you just see the sea of people that have paid money now yeah. to go and see it, which, fine. Watching it through a phone screen because they're recording it, which is why I think a lot of stuff when I get my phone out, like when we were at um, All In, All Out, whatever it's called. Check it all about. A lot of the videos I took are piss poor because I'm holding my phone and recording it, but I'm watching it through my eyes. I've never seen these videos. Not for it. Yeah, because they're shit. Right, okay. Because I'm just holding my phone where I think it should be. Like, mm. I've looked once and gone, yeah, that's fine. But I want to watch it through my eyes. But I enjoyed I don't us... want to watch it through my phone. Yeah. And then I looked at the videos and I was like, yeah, I mean, yeah, I was pissed. But also, I don't no. want to watch it through a phone screen. I can't bear that. Like That was the last time you were mushy mm. i'd say what yeah. you know you don't like that word no, no. you don't like the act don't either. like being it no but it, it's nice nice shows, shows a vulnerability it's nice mm. flair then sends the ref away before a ridiculous <laughs> slow blow to eddie just go and check that bang so stupid i laughed so stupid dirtiest player in the game what do you expect yeah i mean that's a fair point but also no just stop it's another it's... dick move add it to the tally yeah about seven dick punches in uh, Guerrero heads back outside to recover and Milk's returning. This is yeah. where I thought you'd get annoyed here. Snore me now. This I did pour another glass of Prosecco at this point. Fair. Although in this match, that's... The, ooh. Okay, My fine. kitchen is not that far away from my sofa, let's clarify. Well, no, never been. It's like three spaces, like three strides. Okay, fair enough. I'll take your word for it. We then see a delayed vertical suplex by the Nature Boy, but Eddie hits a drop kick to the knee right after and Flair goes down weirdly. Like, it wasn't, it didn't look like a sell job. It looked like, oh, shit, actually, that did kind of hurt yeah. me. So, I, I, again, couldn't land on whether it was good or bad, but I noticed it. Guerrero continues to work over the leg. Flair gets his knee wrapped around the ring post. Mm. Mm. I don't know what I put here. I put Oh, right, yeah, no, I do. Because um, I thought I put out. But I put, when the hell did Flair get cut? Yeah. I have no idea what caused that. No, or He's, what was meant to have caused it. I don't know whether it's a case of his old leathery skin just kind of erupting <laughs> on him. Or if he's just so used to going, oh God, oh shit, oh yeah, God, and I then just know. cut it's himself weird. with a blade. That's classic flair selling, by the way. The, um, oh God, oh God, okay. shit. <laughs> Funny. Eddie leaps over the top rope to the floor, landing on Flair's leg that was draped over the bottom rope. I thought that looked, it was excessive in the mm-hmm. way he did it. Just Effective. Right. Yeah. Guerrero puts the figure four leg lock on Nate, who oh, gets yeah. to the ropes after what felt like an eternity. Yeah. Mm. This match drained me of momentum, I'm going to be honest. It wasn't delivering what I wanted it to. No. No. Um, I also was concerned. I'm going to do an outfit check here. Oh, Flair's pants, man. What's wrong? They... Right. I just don't like the angles that we were give, being given... Why, what when you he's see? in these little pants. No, nothing, thankfully. But mm. I was concerned, especially like the ring post thing. Yeah, yeah. And at one point, he's literally in a straddle. Mm-hmm. And I was like, at any point, one of his leathery balls could pop out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I don't want this. I yeah. don't want this. Look like it's... the opening uh, coin toss oh. at the Ashes. Just a couple of leathery balls <laughs> yeah. there, yeah? Yeah, okay. He just... And the cameras were not like... They were right there. I saw I saw movement. Oh, I was like, I don't want to see this. Which is what I thought you were getting to, but I definitely saw movement. <laughs> yeah. Eddie unloads in the corner, which I wish I hadn't written down like that yeah, and transitioned this way, and hits a seated blockbuster. Mm-hmm. So there you go. That's the second time yes. that move's getting referenced for the night. Flair fights back, but Eddie applies a chin lock. And this is where I'm thinking, this really isn't what I wanted it to be. No, no I... I You'd think again, which makes me think it definitely was a last minute thrown together mm-hmm. idea and they didn't have anything else no. planned. Because these two working together, you should think should be phenomenal. Mm-hmm. And it just wasn't. Uh, Flair backdrops Eddie all the way to the floor, but Guerrero guillotines Rick's neck over the rope. Mm. Suplex by Guerrero, who misses the following frog splash. Yes. Yep. Flair hits a chop block to the back of Eddie's knee and we see Benoit appear. Oh, uh, right, right. 
Benoit appears like he's been down the pub on a Friday night after work, getting into a fight with his mate, so he's taking his top off. Yeah. But he's still got his work trousers and work yeah. shoes on. Yeah. And his blow-dried hair. blow dry. His hair is, just looks Honestly. soft as anything. Honestly. Well, I just laughed. Just... I thought, like, he's ready for business, because that's what I do. If I am if I mean business, you take I, just, I take my top off. I just walk Instantly in the direction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Top off. Just shock well, people with my tits, and what, then... <laughs> what confused me was, right, so Flair at this point puts the figure four on. Yes. Benoit comes out. Mm-hmm. Does nothing. Mm-hmm. I thought he's going to jump in the ring here. Come and on, break Eddie. This up. Come on. He just stands there with his top off. Yep. You don't need your top off to do that. I mean, Heyman had a... all his clothes on when he stood outside the ring. He's got a good little uh, dwarfish physique, though, hasn't he? Like, because everything's just kind of T Rex on him. Like, but he's, he's jacked. He's jacked. Jacked. That, well, we know the problems that this caused later mm. down the line, but he was absolutely jacked. So, to be fair, yeah, take your top off. I mean, yeah, he looks great, but also, why do you have suit trousers on? And shoes, like actual shoes. Because that's how you know he's a professional, Polly. <laughs> I'm so Obviously. What, dumb. what a stupid question that was. Just, it's so annoying. And the, like, I don't know, it just really angered me. <laughs> so, But you're right, so he appears. Yeah. You'd think, because Nature Boy puts on the figure four, mm. in theory that's supposed to end it. Yeah. But Eddie just eventually makes it to the ropes. Yeah. With, and I with just no thought assistance. it was a bit of an anticlimax. It's like Benoit's come out to do what? Stand there and cheerlead. Yeah. Until later, but... Well... They exchange pin attempts, and there's a really awkward bridge transit transition and escape. So Flair's on top of Eddie, mm-hmm. and they're supposed to... I don't know what they call that. I just call it where they both bridge up at the same time and yeah. crab their way to their feet. Yeah, I don't know. And either the positioning wasn't right or just Flair can't do it anymore, which is fair yeah, enough, because I could never do it. So he's 53. Yeah. I get it. And it just it looked all very, very messy. Uh, tornado DDT by Guerrero, but the veteran Flair places his foot over the rope before three. I like that. Yeah. I like when Flair does it. It makes sense. And then we see Benoit pull Flair to the floor and slaps on. I hate to say it because I know what it was used for later, but it's just the best cross face you'll ever see. Yeah. It's just so good. It's so intense. It looks like it hurts like shit. Yeah. He Brilliant. performs it very well. But it's so believable. Yeah. So, so believable. That's one. That's a move that I would look at and not knock do you know what i mean because yeah. like, it's sold well because it can it looks good yep. both parties that are involved from what i've seen i know there'll be others that are shit but it's good yep. it's consistently good I agree. um the referee doesn't see that obviously otherwise that'd be a disqualification mm-hmm. but the he does need to get their fucking eyes tested because this is stupid no it's not their eyes that i'm worried about it's their ears <laughs> which we hear later yeah on. i know <laughs> as the referee shepherds benoit back up back up the ramp mm. uh we see um towel well no he wasn't wearing a towel was he in the end Bubba Ray Dudley <laughs> Bubba Ray comes out from the crowd yeah. hits a Bubba Bomb on Eddie I've yeah. never really understood that as a finishing move because you're basically just being sat down heavy yeah and no I lie because I saw one moment where he did it to Jeff Hardy and it was mm. really good and I'm pretty sure it was at Survivor Series 2001 where mm. they did it from the top rope in that cage match oh. that looked brutal yeah. but in general I just don't believe yeah. it as a match ending move I was However, okay with him. I was okay with him getting involved at this point. Why? I thought this was, was really so, annoying. I was so bored. That wow. I was just ready for it to be finished, and wow. I knew this was coming to an end. So yeah, Bubba Ray hits the Bubba Bomb on Eddie. Yep. Flair crawls in the ring and drapes an arm over Latino yeah. Heat for the one, two, mm-hmm. three. Disappointing end of a disappointing match, and I'm sad that I had to say that. Yeah, it had a lot of potential, mm. and it just didn't give. No, it really didn't. I still can't believe that up to this point that Test and Lesnar is my favourite match of the night. I know, right? Crazy. Crazy, crazy. We then see uh, a WWF get the F out video. So, oh yeah. Do you remember much of why they were making a song and dance of this? Well, it's the brand change, wasn't it? But obviously, it was the Wild Wildlife Foundation. Foundation. Yeah. So, and why wouldn't you claim your name back? <laughs> yeah. So, court battle. Um, yeah. They took it, but WWE did quite a lot of good publicity out the back of this yeah. because they then got the slogan of "Get, get the, the F, F out,", out yeah. which works. I think there was a well, I don't know if this was ever their official merchandise, but I've definitely seen t shirts where it's one panda hitting another panda with a steel chair and it says get the F out. Okay, that's good. Because obviously the World yes. Wildlife Foundation is a panda as their uh-huh. logo. Clever. So yeah. this was quite nostalgic for me seeing that and going, yeah. yeah. I remember thinking at the time though, I was like, I don't want it to be WWE. It's I know. Shit. I know. It's so, but no, it's weird to think it wasn't yeah, weirdly. It is. Yeah. Very much so. Very much so. And then we go to a different backstage segment, which was... Honestly, and these two can piss off. Well, but I hated it. They're very good at being who they're meant to be, 
but I hated it, but I love the way it finished. <laughs> so we see uh, William Regal and Chris mm. Nowitzki in uh, the world they called it, which was the New York Times Square restaurant. Yes couple questionable bits here so this was chris nowitzki do you remember we mentioned him before he was the guy who got a really horrendous concussion yes that ended his in-ring career then he created the movement against wwe mm-hmm. with all these people who had concussion issues and yes. he was the face of it so this was in the very brief period that he was there for mm-hmm. why these two have suddenly decided to go to new york and have them um, some carbonara i, I, mean, I do love a carbonara but i know you do <laughs> I had one yesterday. Did as, you? As a fact, yeah. Very nice. Yeah, that's good because then it absorbs alcohol. Yeah. But it's, yeah. No, yep. I respect that move. Thank you. Um, again, why they were there. But then they talk to who we're supposed to believe is a waitress. Yeah, absolutely not. So, well, okay, yeah, obviously not. But let's just go along with the idea that she is for mm-hmm. the sake of this. So they are just rude to her. I yes. get that. She she's then, her character. She fingers their food. She fingers their food. She f- blasts the shit out of that carbonara. Yeah. Like mushrooms and lardons going everywhere. Yeah. Why would anyone want to go and eat there? Well, you'd return that as well. He didn't see it. Because mm. she had the but her back to him. Regal said it. Did she? Did he? I'm sure he goes, oh, she just put her finger in your food. Oh, I didn't hear him say I'm that. I'm sure he does. We'll have to. I mean, I love a carbonara, but if someone fingers my carbonara, I'm not eating it. If not, that sounds Guinness. awful. <laughs> that really sounded horrendously awful. I still eat your carbonara. Not <laughs> <Stop>. <laughs> what if Nigel McGuinness put his finger in your carbonara? But is he doing it like seductively? <laughs> no, he's he's like he starts off by going right in the plate and oh, then no, just. Oh no, that's no. I like carbonara too much. <laughs> oh, okay, fair enough. Wow. <laughs> but no, Nigel. <laughs> Parmesan with that, Nigel. He, yeah. Well, he nearly sat down and had dinner with us, didn't he? he that really evening. did. <laughs> right. Yes. The only bit I liked about this mm-hmm. was Regal's final line. Okay. When he just went, silly tart. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Tickled me. He does deliver... Again, I mean, we've talked about him before, haven't we? But he does deliver lines very well. But considering very he's meant dry. to be from fucking Blackpool and he sounds like he comes from ye olde London. But do you want to hear the Blackpool accent? I don't mind it. I don't care. But I get, because he's English, they've made him this character. But then don't say he's from Blackpool. But the thing is, he is from Blackpool. Say he's from London. But he is from Blackpool. Oh, I know. That's why it's just plays in my mind. There are certain comedians that I know are Scouse, for example, don't have a hint of Liverpool, Hmm. Liverpoolian accent on them. So it it can happen. It depends where you're kind of brought up. Yeah, I know. It's just, it's, I think it's the the character, like, they're, He's from England, so he must speak prim and proper. But that's how he spoke before. No one, no before. one fucking does. But he was—he did the, all this before. Did he? Yeah. So, like, even when he was working in Japan, yeah. Before, so he went from UK, he did stuff in Europe. This mm-hmm. was, I'm talking late eighties, early, very early nineties, and then went to Japan, and he was still doing the. Okay. He, that's how just how he talks. Okay. So he might well it might Maybe have been a he, conscious decision. Yeah. He might have gone. This accent is hard to. Yeah. get across because if you look at someone like I don't know if you've ever heard his interviews but the British Bulldog yes in my hometown I like, suppose, oh, yeah I God. suppose if also if you're not from England it's, it's probably it. harder to understand oh for sure for yeah I suppose that for makes sure. sense so I think it was a subconscious or like not subconscious yeah. even a conscious, a conscious decision, decision to decision. suppress that yeah okay fair play and then we go from there silly tart silly tart <laughs> It's just because he does it in such yeah. a... It's almost like a Statham-esque yes. whisper, from the way he delivers it. Yeah. Silly tart. We go now to the WWE Women's Championship match. Yeah, we do. Defending champion, mm. Trish Stratus against yeah. Molly Holly. Mm. Again, on paper, when I think about what both women mm. could do in the ring, I'm like, okay, yeah. could be on for something here. Yeah. It just made me a bit annoyed. A bit. Yeah, I can't. I can't let myself get overly annoyed by this. Can you allow me? Sure, go for it. Also, they're both wearing a lot of clothes, which actually quite nice. Always Molly, like purple. Molly, Molly, Holly is. I was watching this, and I thought I don't actually think she's ever been one of the wrestlers that succumbed to wearing nothing. No. She she's the- consistently had like she had the cat suit when she was Mighty Molly, which I yeah. fully enjoyed. And apart from that, I don't think I've ever seen her. No, she'd always have a bit of cleavage. In, yeah, but, but nothing like... Like in this, she's wearing a pair of... like I call them velvet jazz pants, because when I was younger at dancing, right. we, they were velvet jazz Fine. pants. And a T-shirt. 
Yeah, I the most revealing stuff I ever remember her wearing was when she was in WCW. Okay. As I think her name was Gorgeous George then, and it was still oh. in the blonde curly head. She'd oh, wear yeah. like evening gown oh, okay. type outfits. Um, and then it was a bit more chesty, mm-hmm. shall we say. But yeah, you're right. She's never... Yeah. Thought, and, and to be fair... I she's probably needed to. Like... No, but she's like underrated in terms of good looks. Don't get me wrong, her hair in this, oh, this is, is just a awful. scene. But she's I think she's a really pretty girl. Yeah. Like now she'd be on I'm kind of annoyed that I didn't think about her. Yeah. Like, especially because when she had the mighty Molly and the blonde yeah. curls and stuff like that. Really nice. Um and just the and I get it's a storyline, but the abuse that she was getting in Honestly. this is very similar to what they did with Awful. Mickey James like in two thousand nine. Yeah. When they I called her was, Piggy James. Piggy James. Awful. Yeah, because that's clever. And just <laughs> but I'm looking at Molly Holly and I'm thinking her physique to yeah. me is the ideal i i was watching it being like she's got better better physique than i have and they are absolute in my opinion don't give me that face but they are absolute. well they she is being absolutely berated even jr says a couple of things that like, annoys me in this one leave the poor girl alone because it's got to be such a confidence shattering thing i mean whether she put a brave yeah. face on for it or not she always seemed like a trooper yeah. I just felt like it was so unnecessary, the whole thing. Oh, it's, no, not fun. And like I said, don't get me wrong, and I'm not saying it would make it right, but let's be fair, if it was someone like, but the thing is, they say, don't Nia do, Jax... They don't, they don't do it. Yeah. Well, obviously they wouldn't do it now, but do if, you know what I mean? It's like they didn't actually call out no, when it would make sense. If you're a le- legitimate, beefy stromboli, they don't call you out. But if you're in absolutely banging shape but not stick thin... Yeah. You get called out for it. Yeah, like at one point King says, oh, this is survival of the fattest. He actually said that two matches before, because that's when I noted it. Yeah, and I'm like, in what world? In what world? Great shape. Honestly. Because she's, it's the shape where, and I know this is, like, it sounds like we're kind of going the other way by being over complimentary, but she's not overly toned, which I like. Yeah, yeah. So I don't, when I see a woman. She looks like a woman. Yeah, exactly. That's that's it. Do you know what I mean? Like a natural woman. Oh, you're going to sing? I was tempted. I stopped myself. You're welcome. <laughs> but yeah, and I just thought, like looking at it, and we all know how I felt about Trish back then, but yeah. I look now, and she's in better shape. To me, that's a better shape than Trish. Yeah. It's just, it's just uh, the hair is where I draw yeah, the line, because we've got limits. Um, So basically, they've all made it clear that the idea is Molly Holly is fat, but shit, she is in fantastic shape. Yeah. I just, yeah, mad. And I said her hair is four flavours of shit, though. I mean, yeah, it's not ideal. It's not good. Uh, Trish comes out wearing the co-host's favourite colour, and I appreciate the shout-out. Um, it was good purple. Yeah. Very good purple. Yeah. Although her entrance isn't the same without the mu- the music, the different music. Because it's like... Yeah, I like the, obviously the laugh at the beginning. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, that, I think that came in... I think in it comes later, doesn't it? ...in about a year's time, mm-hmm. maybe. Uh, so before the match even starts Trish has to be restrained by the ref mm-hmm. but when she goes to take her belt off she's jumped good heel work by Molly yes well played also apparently puppy power according to someone commentary who's that someone commentary oh, honestly just it's if we had a pound or actually if we were drinking if we did a shot every time an inappropriate comment was said we'd be absolutely you'd be dropping L bombs o- all over the place yeah, at that point yeah <laughs> But right, I'm tu- uh, tuning commentary out. Yeah. Just heard fat ass thong yeah. and what was it, rikishi sized butt. Yeah. And I heard the phrase JR in a thong, and I was like, no, I'm done. Yeah, yeah. No, I cannot be doing with this kind of mental yeah. imagery. Uh, we hear the We Want Puppies chant because uh, Attitude Era. Yeah. I said, just what a stark contrast that is to the last show we watched. Yeah, isn't it? Just Imagine if we saw put Becky those Lynch. In comparison. Yeah. Yeah, Becky Lynch, Charlotte Flair, last woman standing. Yeah. We want puppies. Yeah. No. Perish the thoughts. Absolutely. Perish not. the thoughts. Molly Holly is gradually beating down Trish, who very nicely steps into a victory roll. I actually thought that was really yeah. good. So she kind of steps over the shoulder, rolls yeah. forward, really well executed. Uh, I think a lot of the credit as well has to go to Molly Holly for being sturdy base. For, for sure. that, Which doesn't help the fact that I'm saying don't call her. She's just strong. She's just strong. Yeah. yeah. Good core strength. Mm hmm. Uh, the neck breaker that follows gets a two, as does the wheelbarrow pin attempt, oh. is what I called that. Yeah. Because I don't really know what else it is. No. They kind of do a wheelbarrow yeah. shape, but reversed, that came after. And I'm sure there's an official name for it, which eludes me. Uh, Trish is then flung neck first onto the bottom rope and then drop kick to the floor. So it was done very well. Mm. 
But when you're falling, I find it must be harder to gauge how to stop yourself from actually yes. knocking yourself out or crushing your Yuck. larynx briefly. <laughs> Uh, it looked nasty, but again, it was well executed. Mm -hmm. Molly then sends Trish face first into the apron and tosses her into the crowd. Lucky crowd. Yeah. It's interesting to watch as well, like, because Molly is definitely painted in this one as being the vicious, like, mm -hmm. heel. And Trish is very, like, vulnerable. And, like, and I was like, this is odd. Princess mentality. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Now, like, that would be the roles reversed in terms of what's considered a heel and a face. Mm -hmm. The kick ass take charge take no shit woman yeah is the face yeah and for sure. the princess like it's kind of like how carmella mm -hmm. has that kind of vibe going for her yeah and the shit kicking you've got becky lynch yeah complete role reversal interesting go back in the ring and trish hits a very good corner handstand hurricane runner when she could still do this move and it looked yeah. good really good yeah no issue with it at all there's also a comment about I know you've blocked out commentary by now, but yeah, I had there was a um a comment about playing naked twister. Oh no, I did hear that. <laughs> and JR was like, No, thank you. I'm a married man. <laughs> also, I thought, is that where I got naked twister from? So I've made that comment a few Maybe. times. Oh dear. Oh dear. Uh we get a flurry of chops uh from Stratus in the corner, including a lovely bit of self spanking, which was yeah, completely weird. Oh no, it's needed. Otherwise was how it? Did... Yeah. Was it? It was the noise. Because that's they did like, have this a is nice what it noise, like. to be fair. But... Oh, she didn't lick her hand either. This no. was before the hand licking era. Uh, clothesline and then a drop kick. Neither were great. No. Uh, Trish using a chick kick as a, transi a transitional move, easy for me to say. Yeah. She hit it a couple times on Molly and it never led to a, even a pin attempt, I don't think. Um, but then she sees her stress faction countered into a German suplex, which was nice. Trish yes. only just got her shoulder up, yeah. which was a bit close. Uh, Molly go round misses, which look painful. Oh, that has got to jar your spine. But um, she's like a, a decent sized posterior, shall we say? So oh, it's, it's still not going to be nice because the momentum that you're hitting it with as well. No. Um, we see a roll up pin by Trish, but it's countered into one by Molly. Yes. And she holds the tights. We get the one, yeah. two, three new women's champion. Yeah. Both okay. titles have changed hands so far. Yeah. Will it be three? Who. Well, well so we who know. knows? We Everyone know who knows who's it. seen it as well. But <laughs> that was a really boring match. I'll yeah, it be wasn't honest. good. It wasn't good. Really dull. It was before Trish was fully in her pomp as um, mm -hmm. a good in ring worker. She, it wasn't. There was nothing bad apart from the couple moves were a little bit sloppy. They weren't really given time to do no. much, so it's probably no, as good exactly. as they could have made it with what they had at their disposal. Yeah. But I didn't particularly enjoy it. No. Go backstage once more. Oh, Kurt honestly. Angle interview. What the fuck is he wearing a toupee? I had forgotten that this was a thing. I'll be honest, I had, and I and laughed I, as soon as I, I saw it. Honestly, I couldn't stop laughing. I'd forgotten all about it, and then I was like, oh, I see. So ridiculous. So we see Angle visibly wearing some roadkill under his amateur wrestling yeah. uh, gear, which is strapped on pretty well, it to was. be fair. Because it doesn't move too, too much. No. Uh, and then Angle said, if Vince McMahon wanted Hulk to be a zookeeper, he would have been. Which I like that, because basically Hulk's like, oh, I'm the Americana, I'm the all-American yeah. hero. And Angle's like, if he told you you were a dustbin man, you'd have been a dustbin yeah. man. Shut up. Mm -hmm. Which is great. Yeah. Good promo work by yeah, Angle. So very I feel good. vindicated with my score for him. I said it was a good promo in general. And then we sent once again to Taz and Mike and Cole and the cheap... Michael? Michael, Michael Cole and... Michael blah, 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 and Michael Cole in the cheap seats. I did like at the end where he goes, oh, it's true. It's red, white, and blue. I was like, yes, red, yeah, white, and blue. True. Nice. I like yeah. that. It was good. Very clever. Again, yeah. back in the cheap seats back for Taz Michael Cole. Like, no one cares. No one cares. No. We, we see him once. Taz still got his sunglasses on. You'd be oh, pleased no. to hear. Yeah, it just annoys me. And now we go, and it's not just Hulk Hogan. This isn't any Hulk Hogan. This is Marks and Spencer's Hollywood Hulk Hogan. Yes. Yeah. It's uh, same gear as Hulk Hogan, though, basically. Well, yeah, but he's got a couple of feather bubbles on. Well, yeah, and, this and is, yeah, okay, I take it back. Yeah, it is kind of a hybrid between the two. I'll mm -hmm. give you that because Hollywood Hulk Hogan to me is the black and white NWO okay. WCW Hollywood Hulk Hogan. Yes, going against uh, one of the Muppets, Kurt Angle, <laughs> Fozzie Bear. Yeah, Fozzie Bear, Waka Waka. <laughs> so it's on paper, yeah, very interesting match. Yes, very very interesting I was match. Intrigued. Uh, I like the little story. This the good thing for me with the older pay per views. Is that they give a little a little VT of why we're having this? You're impressed you with impressed VT. My VT. Yeah, I am. Mm -hmm. 
Um, yeah, it didn't take away from it, and I couldn't remember why they were feuding. Yeah. To be fair, do you remember how Angle came to lose his hair? They do mention it in the match briefly. No. Uh, so sure he don't. lost a match to Edge in a hair versus hair match. Oh, one of those so, stupid matches. Yeah. He looks so much better without hair, though. He does, because even when I now go back and watch older Kurt Angle stuff and I see the hair, I go, what? The buzz cut. Yeah. It's like the John Cena buzz cut. Oh, don't. That Sorry. gets me upset. That gets but, me upset. Yeah, I think he looks so much better with a shaved head. Oh, he does. So my first comment on this is, why is Hogan coming out first? And what the hell was that music? So, yeah, it wasn't the music I'd expected. So it wasn't, I am a real... Yeah. American. But I looked up what it was supposed to be, and it was Voodoo Child by Jimi Hendrix. Oh. And I was like, oh, that would have been good. But they obviously, no. for licensing reasons, don't want to use it anymore, so they're not paying for it. So they put that on there. But again, why is it coming out first? Yeah, that was weird. I, I see no logical reason why they've done that. Especially with the crowd pop. Yeah, why, why have they done like, that? Like, have Angle come out to you suck? Yeah. And then, hey. But the crowd pop, I don't even know how much of that had to be filtered in because with the music that they've dubbed yeah, over... Yeah, true. Unless they're on separate tracks. Yeah, I'm know. sure he... Oh, that was a whistle. I'm sure he did get a good reception, yeah. but it's difficult to tell yeah. because of what they did with the music. I did actually say it was one of Hogan's better looks, this, because I liked I really the liked it. blonde, t- but with, with the stubble. With the dark stubble. I works. did actually really like it. I yeah. know I've commented before about... he ate, To me, he ages backwards. Obviously not now, like, and he yeah. is old, but Late here 60s, he maybe. looked younger than in some of the older videotapes I've seen yep. when he's been wrestling, yeah, fair. which really confused me. And the fact that, to me, he looked in great shape, and this was three years before the match he had with Shawn Michaels. Mm-hmm. I was like, bloody hell. Yeah. It's impressive. Yeah. We see the You Suck chance in full force of at course. this stage. I said the fans just love Hogan, man. Mm-hmm. Really love Hogan. Start off, Hogan out muscles Angle and sends him flying into the corner before posing because Hogan. Showing his veteran power. Veteran power. Yeah, oh, sponsored yeah. by Old Spice. This. Yeah. Top wrist lock lasts for an age. Like, it's just too long. Just too, too mm-hmm. long. Against a Hogan match, you kind of know what you're getting. It's going to be a But it's also slower. an Angle match. Yeah. I want more from yeah. an Angle match. Eventually, Hogan escapes and shoulder tackles Angle to the floor. And I thought, oh, hello. Let's just remember Shawn Michaels doing the overselling, yes. but Angle obviously doesn't yep. do that because he had no reason to. Sloppy clothesline from Angle. Um, I don't know if there was a miscommunication along the way here. Uh, it leads to Hogan throwing Kurt to the floor, though. Uh, brief brawl before they return back to the ring. Yeah. I just Again, it's just downhill from here with the matches going outside the ring. Angle eats the top turnbuckle nine times, I think it is. Oh, uh, God. It's, I mean... Part of me is annoyed because we've talked about this, the same thing over and over again. I, we don't like it. But I think because the way Angle sells it, is that right? Yeah. Or performs it, it doesn't look... You can't, from the camera angle it's given, it actually looks like what is happening is actually happening. Mm-hmm. So yeah. I gave it to them as like a, oh, you can have this one. It's also padding. Oh, for sure. It's like a cushion. Yeah. But only the Samoans can not be affected by that because they've got a thicker skull <laughs> apparently God. that's just how it works the Samoans are the only ones that no sell it uh, so yeah he eats it nine times then Hogan signals that he's going to remove the wig mm-hmm. uh, but he's hit with a low blow of course Why not? Uh, ninth dick punch of the dick night punch. I think dick punch uh, Angle beats Hogan in the corner and this is not going to be a pacey match all corners all corners all corners, yep. all corners. I mean I said it got a bit of nice movement but just because it's from one corner to another to another. So it wasn't I was a bit like, it. yeah, so they weren't just standing around, but also it's a bit like, all right, chopped off. But we then go into a back suplex, which looked good. Mm-hmm. And Angle, um, I'm surprised Hogan agreed to do a lot of the moves in yeah. this match, to be fair. Um, back suplex, make it two from the gold medalist, who then chokes Hulk on the middle rope, and we start to hear the <laughs> selling of Hogan. Uh, Hollywood suplexes Angle. I don't think I've ever hit, seen Hogan hit a suplex in my life. No. He never hits him. I mean, I'm sure I'm going to be proven wrong in some of the other shows we see, but I don't recall him ever hitting one. He does do my favourite move at some point. No, no, no. Oh, don't worry. We <laughs> will get to that. Go, we'll get to I love that. The tumbo. <laughs> Angle applies a sleeper hold. Here oh, we are. Snort me now. And I would bet the house I know what is coming. Holly, do the honours. <laughs> I'm asleep. 
I'm asleep. <gasps> I'm awake. No, 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 no. no, no. no. <laughs> I do like the very, I hate the sleep, sleep, awake. But it was just the hand with the no, no, no. Yeah. And I was like, I just like it. It's funny. <laughs> Hogan then applies a sleeper of his own, but a third back suplex breaks the hole pretty quickly. Yeah. Angle Slam only gets a two, and now Hogan is doing what Hogan does. I do like the old, the I don't know how to describe it because I'm doing it. The waving your hand in front of your the ear, ear, cupping the again, ear again. It's it's one of his things. It is. I clearly don't care about his wrestling, but I like. No, why should you? I like what he does in the ring. So Hogan begins hulking up. Big boot on Kurt, and Hogan removes his headgear and wig. I just don't understand why he was embarrassed. He looks so much better. It was just a pride thing as much as anything, right, I think. Okay. Um, all that was gimmick-wise, why it was done right. like that. Uh, Angle goes to leave until mm. Hulk puts the wig on. Yeah. Uh, so the, I can't remember the last time Hogan had hair there, to be fair. I know, it's so, weird, isn't it? Yeah, it was very weird. <laughs> looked like a Donald Trump toupee was oh on the God. go. Uh, Angle runs in with a chair, misses Hogan. This I liked. This was good. <laughs> it made me laugh. He hits the ropes and it bounces back and hits him in his own face. Very clever. Yep. Uh Oh, God, what have I written there? Because that looks bad. This next bit was quite clever, well, I thought. Yeah, so... It was executed. Big boot from Hulk once again, but he misses the leg drop as Angle grabs the ankle lock. I liked that. I thought that was a nice touch. It was. It, it wasn't... Was speedy. A, yeah, that's the issue. It, it was, was a nice idea. <laughs> nice idea, but not quite executed perfectly. No. Both men are very sweaty. Yes. How is anyone holding anything? Because there's so much sweat all over the gap. Yeah, I mean, yeah. That's fair. Maybe it's like a Batista contract signing oh, homage God, yeah. that hasn't homage. happened yet. <laughs> uh, Hogan eventually makes the ropes, but it's pulled back. Yeah. Tries to roll twice to escape, but Angle yeah. is just relentless holding on to that ankle. Mm -hmm. uh, Hogan is pulled away from the ropes one more time, and he taps, which is the first and only yes. time I think he's ever submitted mm -hmm. in a WWE ring. I did Google it as well. Yeah, I know he's submitted in WCW. Yes. they said in WWE this is the only... And, oh, and, it's, says, and a lot of people said that they were surprised. Like I went onto some a fan thing. I don't know what you call them. Forum. forum thank yeah. you. Um, and a lot of people were saying that they didn't expect the match to finish that way because they didn't expect Hogan to have agreed to let it finish that way. Yeah. Uh, I think the only thing that he's got going for him is that if Angle wanted to take Hogan down and tap yeah. him out, he's going to do it. Yeah. Olympic gold medalist wrestler Hogan would have stood a chance. Absolutely. Not, not that Angle did submission moves as part of amateur wrestling, mm -hmm. but so I think Hogan was probably, and again, I'm speculating here, was probably okay with the fact or the idea behind it was a legitimate athlete. Yes. If he was ever yeah, going like, to. Yeah, like if you're going to tap out to anyone, that's someone other, decent to tap out to. Only other one you'd kind of go with is like a Brock Lesnar. Yeah. I think. But yeah. Yeah, again, I was very surprised. I don't think it hurt Hogan mm -hmm. at all and made Angle look like a superstar. Yeah. in the process yeah. I think it was really well done yeah the match you know it's difficult with a Hogan match to get too excited it's again it's not so... bad better than the last one if you could watch that on one and a half speed I think it I would have liked it more because yeah. actually I didn't mind the content of it it's just the pacing the timing of from one segment to another was just if I could watch it on a higher speed fine I also think it's just a marked improvement from the Barker we saw yeah I think also because this is probably the second only the second Hulk match I've probably I've definitely seen some others in my past yeah. but like analysing wise so yes only the second one for it's him it's better it's far fucking better than that shit show we watched it really is speaking of um, well oh. I don't think it is <laughs> I'll be honest so we go backstage oh. where we see uh, Gold Dust, who's uh, dressed in the rocks gear oh People's eyebrow painted on because this was a phase where Goldust was imitating a lot okay, of people. Okay, right. I didn't understand it. So, so I was like, what the fuck is going on there? He's starting to team with Booker T. Oh, and the pairing okay. of them together is great because the amount of times that Booker has to stop himself from laughing, right? even in this segment alone, I think is great. So we see Goldust wearing the rock cosplay. He goes into a full impression until the real article appears behind him. Mm -hmm. And it's just the rock's mannerisms, his face of. Looking gold dust up and down. Yeah. Brilliant. It's the kind of comedy that I liked. It wasn't too over the top. We then get The Rock mocking gold dust and Booker T tries not to laugh. Mm -hmm. Rock says he's here to see what happens with the undisputed title. Talk, talks in the third person the whole time. Of course he does. It's The Rock. I know. And I know he's always done it. But 
I watched the clip where he came back to Raw. Was it last week? Yes. And I, I had to turn it off. Oh, no. I had to turn it off. I did come back and watch the rest of it later. Okay. But because I'd watched this... Right. And then I was... I think I was making dinner, so I put that on because it was like a 25-minute yes. full segment. Um, Jinder Mahal. Oh, I can fuck off. Honestly. You did? I know. <laughs> um, again, I did, did feel a bit bad after a little while, though. But I was like... Oh, and the rock says this, and the rock does this, and the rock does that. I'm like, oh god, please stop! I'm I, gonna start doing it at work. I I'm think they're talking about myself in the third person. I think you should. <laughs> Holly says. <laughs> yeah, there's a bit later on where third person I think actually works quite well. Not okay. third person. There's a there's, not soliloquy, but there's a part later on which I actually really enjoyed. Mm-hmm. I think you might have done as well. So after he says he's here to see what uh, happens with the undisputed title, he asks Goldust what he does, and Goldust says. I have more ammunition in my cannon than you know. The Rock looks him up and down and says, Stop rubbing yourself. Nobody wants to hear about ammunition in your cannon. Booker really struggles with this. Really struggles. His head goes down. And then Rock does his thing, leaves. Goldust goes to then uh, mock Booker T Mm -hmm. or impersonate Booker T. Booker puts the five fingers up in front of him, nods the head and then screams sucker in his face and this one's over. I liked it. I mean, of all the backstage segments we've had so far, that is the best. Yeah, I I actually thought I loved it. It was really good. Really enjoyed it. We then go now. This was a short... Right, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Go for it. This was a shorter pay-per-view. It felt like one of the longest I'd ever seen. And I paused it at this point. I don't know what I was doing. Probably refilling my glass, let's be honest. And I looked, I was like, there's still 45 minutes left. But I totally forgot... I didn't even know what was coming. So I was like, how the hell are they going to drag this out for 45 minutes? I didn't even realise there was another fucking match. So I knew at this point, because I this is where I paused it, so I watched yeah. everything relatively in one go, apart from a couple of walkaways that I had to do mm-hmm. for frustration. So I knew there were two matches left. Mm. My concern was, I recalled the Lesnar-RVD match not being particularly long. Right. And because I knew the other match coming, yeah. I was in a dark place. Okay. Because... We're, we're, yeah, get we'll get there, there when we get there. Yeah. But this is the final yeah. of the King of the Ring 2002 tournament. We've Lovely. got Brock Lesnar against Rob Van Dam. Talk about Styles Clash. Honestly, I thought this was going to be a quick one and done. I expected it. I mean, if it was being done now, it sure it shit would, would be. It would be like a two minute, wouldn't yep. it? Uh, I said this contrast of styles actually excites me. Yeah. Don't get me wrong, RVD is significantly smaller than... Yes. Brock Lesnar, but this was still in the era where Brock Lesnar isn't the animal that yes, he is now. For sure. And he People worked... did actually get their punches in and exactly you know I mean? like, got yeah. their time to shine. Yeah. So at the time mm-hmm. I didn't watch this pay per view and I think I actually read the results of it in one of the magazines that came out shortly thereafter. Old school. Yeah, I used to love getting wow. the wrestling magazines. I've been in a couple of them. Really? Uh, yeah. I've had not articles but yeah. things posted in it. Um, still got them somewhere actually I don't know where they are but anyway and I saw those two in the final and I thought oh that would be cool to watch so I, I don't know even though I've seen this match a few times still going into this I was like yeah this is a match that would excite me mm-hmm. definitely would excite me so I said both men are athletic so even though yes. like Brock's bringing power it's just different athletic very different like, athleticism but yeah. it, they've both got it in, in abundance yeah uh, Heyman shouting encouragement makes him feel big time when just the way it not as in makes Heyman feel big time, yeah. but just him shouting Lesnar and all this yeah. stuff makes him just feel like a, a big deal, yeah. which he was. He went on to be to prove to be the case. <sighs> Match starts, Brock runs R V D right into the corner, but Van Damme yeah. turns it around pretty quickly. Because yeah. now what you'd expect is shoulder block, shoulder block, yes. German suplex, Damn. German suplex, F five, fuck yeah. you. But uh Van Damme turns it around pretty quickly. Mm-hmm. Uh, RVD reverses over a back body drop attempt. I like that. Yeah, because he kind of... I don't know how to explain it, but he back somersaults over. Yes. Didn't land perfectly on his no, feet. No, but I really like it. I love it when he does that. But the thrust kick that followed, sure as shit, looked like it yeah. hit Brock Lesnar in the throat. Yes. Brock sells it like a treat. Uh, a monkey flip attempt is probably not a good idea against someone the size of Brock yeah, Lesnar. Yeah, not. And... Uh, it's just good because what what would you do if you're Lesnar? Someone's just jumped there. I'm going to pick you up and just and throw you into the mat as hard yeah. as I can. Wow. Really good power bomb. Heyman shouting yes on the outside is either a precursor to Daniel Bryan or a when Harry met Sally tribute. <laughs> Couldn't decide yeah. which. He's just going yes, 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 yes. the whole time. 
Lesnar picks up Van Dam and charges him back first into the opposite corners before a high angle power slam. I don't know what he was originally going for there, no, but I feel I don't like know. he changed his mind part way through it. Yeah. Because it was like he was going to throw him onto his shoulders. Yeah. And they went, oh, actually, no, I'm just no. going to. So, but it looked good. Yeah, I just fine. know that that wasn't what he intended going into no. it. And this is where we start to see Van Damme's back really start playing in. So it was evidence a little bit earlier after the double underhook yes. suplex that Jericho hit in the mm-hmm. first match. Uh, Lesnar then picks up Van Damme. By his unitard. By his unitard. <laughs> and he hits him with just those oh, backbreakers. The two backbreakers. horrendous. And I don't know if it's again playing on the you know rvd's got that flexibility so maybe but, he, but it looks awkward because it's a side cause it's like a rat he literally ragdolls him over his knee there. sideways though yeah. so like backwards i feel like you've got more maneuverability yeah. than you do on the sideways. Side, oh it looked it looked exactly how you would want it to look really yeah for sure and we know how i feel about a bear hug in a more modern age wrestling and i hate it but i fully believe this that works brock lesnar doing it would between suck between this matchup as well yeah it's, why wouldn't you? Yeah, if he was doing it on Big Show, I'd be like, come yeah, on. Yeah, that'd be fucking stupid. Come on. But uh, yeah, believe that would be absolutely horrendous. Mm-hmm. Uh, Brock misses a corner charge. Van Damme's had a very good success rate of avoiding corner charges yeah. in his two matches. Uh, and goes shoulder first into the ring post. RVD then throws multiple kicks at Brock before a top rope sidekick drops him. Yeah. So another one of those top rope sidekicks, which fills me with fear. Mm-hmm. Rolling Thunder. Yeah. Gets Big two. fan, big fan. And the kick out, though, sees him nearly land on the ref. I know. <laughs> yeah. But again, it's a nice touch. Yep. It's kind of that power play. Very much so. Five star frog splash follows. But Lovely. Heyman, yes. Lovely. Very good. Could watch him do those. He's my. Oh, if I had to rate the people that do them, I, for me, he would be top. Yep. Shortly followed by Eddie Guerrero for me. Oh, see, I don't even think I'd put him next. You'd be wrong, because I know you go put Seth Rollins in. Yes. Seth, Rollins. <laughs> Seth Rollins is just not better than I Eddie probably Guerrero. just haven't watched enough of them recently. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Seth if I watched them again, Seth will end up falling down the line. And that's not me saying that Seth does it badly, because he no. doesn't. But the force that Eddie looks like he hits it yeah. with looks more impactful okay. to me, which is why I put him above yeah. Rollins. Rollins is up there, for yeah. sure. But I would put Rollins after Owens. Oh, He'd be, okay. But I really like. Okay, right, we're going down the road here. Sorry. I really like the way that. So Eddie Guerrero, as I mentioned before, took that move from Art Bar. Okay. After this, remind me, and I'll show you okay. Art Bar hitting it, and it was just very mm-hmm. good. But we never really saw anything of him because of At his some tragic point, end. We'll do uh, rate the rate the move. Yeah, done by who, the wrestler. who hit it best? Yeah, we'll do that. Who and wore then... it best? Who hit it best? Exactly. So, after the five-star frog splash, you'd expect um, RVD to go for the pin, but he doesn't. Heyman no. guillotines RVD over the top rope. What was great here, though, was that Van Damme stumbled back and collapsed, lying on top of Lesnar. So that was very good. Yes. yes. Nice. I, really good touch. I literally wrote, is this it? Is this going to be how it finished? Because that would have been bloody brilliant. Yeah. Heyman falls to his knees, thinking, oh, my God, what have I done? Yeah. Because you think, oh, Brock's going to kick his mm-hmm. ass. But Brock gets out at the count of two. Yeah. Heyman looks relieved, but is then quickly dropped with a baseball slide to the back of the head. Of course. Brilliant. So, to be fair. Scrambles to put his hat back on. To be fair, yeah. <laughs> RVD then leaps to the top rope. Always love that. Always left him going up there in one bound. Yes. I, I think we covered it in Evolution, didn't we, with the girl... Um, EO Sky. Yeah. And or I was, Shirai she is then. And um, obviously he's the first guy I think I've seen do that. I'm sure from others re- have from done reviewing, it. But... From the ones we've reviewed. Oh, yeah. I'd be and pretty... And it's, it's just effortless. Yeah, really good. Really, really good. Um, so he leaps to the top rope. He mm-hmm. takes flight, but he's caught mid-air. Mm. I love... So he didn't actually go straight to the top. To no. He jumped to the middle rope and then spun to hit a crossbody. Nice. Lesnar catches course, him. Game straight over. on the shoulders. F5. Van Damme looks dead. Absolutely. Brilliant sell. But One, brilliant. two, three. Brock Lesnar is your yeah. king of the wing. Did you... Wing... King of the King Chicken of the wing. Wings. Now that was Rikisha. Did you know that Brock Lesnar won the tournament? I don't. I don't remember. My we know my memory is piss poor. I could watch a match today and forget it, like tomorrow, if so, I'm not taking notes. So this earned him a shot mm. at the undisputed title okay. at SummerSlam. Mm-hmm. Do you know who he had a match with at SummerSlam? Ooh. So was it the person that held the undisputed? Was it Rock? Oh, okay. Yeah, the Rock took it off. Whoever the winner was of the main event coming up next before oh, the pay per view, so which makes okay, that makes sense then. Brock. As in, 
how the next one unfolds makes sense now because yep. otherwise why would why that make sense? exactly but before okay. we go to the main event, oh, no. we go backstage one more time. Why? What are you saying why for? This is another one of your uh, Mount Rushmore <laughs> candidates. I'm fine with it, but I just don't need to... Like, the backstage wasn't necessary, was it? What did, what value did it bring? Because all I thought was that these people were going to make an appearance. Well, that was the suggestion, wasn't it? Mm. So we see Triple H and the NWO backstage. So first of all, Triple H is coming to the ring, sees Shawn Michaels. Yeah. Forming... Uh, or the like the founding fathers of DX, mm -hmm. should I say. They've got a history. So Sean hasn't long been back at this uh, point. Oh, I see, yep. So after 98, when mm -hmm. he lost the title to Stone Cold at WrestleMania, uh, he was out for a significant period with back issues. He was addicted to painkillers. Oh, he was in I a very see. bad way, mm -hmm. quite immobile. Um, he went away. I think pretty much everyone thought he was done. 2002, in a bit of a better place. Found okay. God at some point in between. Yeah. Came back. And this would go on to lead on to his main feud. But he came back joining the NWO for whatever reason. Okay. We see them come face to face backstage. Mm. We then shortly see them after Barney. Kevin Nash come out. Yeah. All three of them have a group hug because they are Cause part of the clique. Why not? So know? if I think we covered it on a podcast before. Mm -hmm. When Kevin Nash or Diesel, as he was at the time, and Razor Ramon yes. left mm -hmm. WWE around the same time. They had what's known in the business as the curtain call. Yeah. I think it was a Madison Square Garden house show. I don't think it was even on TV or anything like that. Uh, Diesel and Razor Ramon finished their match. And then uh, Shawn Michaels came out. Triple H came oh, out. Oh, yes, I do remember. And what they did the about. arms in the air celebration. Yeah. Like basically forgetting all the storylines and yeah. stuff. It was like a, you just didn't do that no. back then. Um, so this was a kind of throwback to the fans. We then see uh, Sean Waltman or X Pac. X Pac. Yeah. yeah. And Big Show, who I completely I forgot was didn't... put in the WWE's version of NWO. Yeah. I'll be honest as well. When I saw them all there, I was like, what the fuck is Big Show there? He was, I think, in when the NWO originally started in WCW, it was obviously The Outsiders, which was Scott Hall and mm -hmm. Kevin Nash. The third man was Hulk Hogan. Yes. They then had Ted DiBiase. Hmm. who was a million dollar man who was their manager of sorts okay. and I think the fifth member was actually the giant Big Show because oh. they were going oh he's Andre the Giant's son um, that was right. his gimmick I see. so I knew he was in the WCW version and he was in and out and it was just a sham but I don't remember them putting him in the WWE version so it can't have been for that long mm -hmm. but we see them all there as Triple H is going to the ring Kevin Nash says just throw up the two sweet symbol if you want our help Yeah, that's it we now go to the main event of the evening. Mm -hmm. This is now my longest note-taking match. Oh, God. Okay. I also have to apologise in this one. Because I have previously said... Well, do you want to... You can start by saying what the match is and then I'll, I'll okay. interlude. So, Undertaker is defending yeah. the WWE Undisputed title against Triple H. Okay, here is my apology. I previously have said that I didn't mind the Undertaker... In the American badass era, and you said you only like it because of the song, and I went, yeah, probably. This clarified, I only liked it because of the song. Clip that. <laughs> I want that for posterity <laughs> in the future. I don't apologise ever. So, th this proved to me that it was hundred percent the song that was doing it for me because I was like, what the fuck is this? Yep. And I just willed Triple H to hurry up and come out so I could watch that instead. Yep. So. Here comes the American red ass on his bike. <laughs> and as much as I dislike the gimmick, and I dislike the gimmick, mm -hmm. uh, the champion shouldn't come in first. Oh, yeah. Again, why? That is a very I know good he's point. The, the heel in it, but he's coming out on a bike. He's the champion. Come in second. That is true, actually. That Stupid. doesn't make sense. Unless they were saying, oh, well, we had to do the NWO and Triple H bit first, so you had to believe that he was further away. No, you didn't. Yeah. Pre record that Pre -record shit. Pre record it, yeah. Yeah, and send Triple H out. But then oh, I guess I'd say where's Triple H walking? Yeah. Annoying. And like I said, I don't like the the American Badass version of the, the gimmick. Mm -hmm. I've already said that, but still, that shouldn't be happening. No. Some woman is losing her ever-loving fucking mind at Triple H coming out. You just hear... Yeah, I know. It was really loud as well. Like, it's annoying. Horrendous ear saw. Horrendous. Oh. I said the mad cow sounds possessed. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I just read one of my notes. I remember doing this. Go on. It's, it's, I mean, it's not about wrestling whatsoever. Well, it, it kind of is, but 
I remember being younger, obviously. What when was this? Two thousand and two. So I would have been fourteen. Just fourteen. Um, and back then, obviously, not really. There was no one here really that I was that attracted to. And then I watched it, and I was like, "Oh, yeah, Triple H would get it here." <laughs> Absolutely, schnoz would. as well. Oh, I fucking love a big schnoz. I know you do. Oh, absolutely. For our American listeners, schnoz means nose. Just in oh, case. I do love a, a unique schnoz, and I was like, it's the oh, yeah, I would. I know. Absolutely, I know you would. I can only apologise. Uh, so I put here my first comment on the, the Triple H. Is I put the game is in prime roid mode. Here. Yes. Uh, quad tearing era. Oh, is this? Oh, he's not it? long come back from a quad tear. Oh, okay. And again, that's the type of injury that you only get from extensive steroid abuse. Oh, okay. That muscle injury doesn't happen like that no. to most people. Oh, it's just okay. it's specifically a steroid. So is that why it happened to Vince as well? I see. At the same oh, you're time, teaching me big facts today. Yeah, and Triple H didn't just tear his once; he's done it a couple of times. Is he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. So the two men go nose to chin before mm. they begin throwing hands. Yeah, the ref. I think the ref choice, whether it was done intentionally or not, was very clever because it made the guys look bigger because yeah. the ref was so I th- short. I could be wrong, but I think Triple H is 6'1", six, 6'2". Six, okay. I don't think he's a giant, but obviously he's Which, stacked yeah. to the gills, so I get it. Um, Triple H explodes out the corner and takes Taker down with a choke, basically. Mm-hmm. Then clotheslines him to the floor, and we're outside already. A theme that will continue. Did you know... Undertaker was 37. Here. Fuck me, tough paper round. Honestly, I had to Google it three times. He was 37 and I was like, hang on, he's two years older than I am now in this match and he looks like he's 50. I was going to say, you wore it better for sure. Thank you. Also, why the fuck has he got a carabiner on his belt? Where's he going rock climbing? Honestly, once I saw it, I wish I'd not seen it because I was really? like, why? Why? Of all the things that are going to get referenced in this, oh. I wasn't expecting to hear the word carabiner. I know, neither was I. Uh, Taker then grabs uh, Hunter's leg and pulls him out right after. Mm-hmm. Forgot to mention that Heyman is commentating for this match. It's a welcome addition because I was so yeah, angry true. with mm-hmm. Lawler at that it point. It did add a bit of I just wanted something, him off it. something. Yep. Taker tells Earl Hebner to shut up before he has his own head smacked into the steel steps. I put the amount of product in Undertaker's hair is obscene. Oh, I know. Which character did he play in Greece again? <laughs> Is it Danny? You're funny. Absolutely not. Big ginger bitch. <laughs> Stop. Both men brawl outside the ring for a while longer mm. and I'm bored. Was this the one where they said, like, oh, the ref is scared to count them out? Probably. I wasn't listening. And I was just like, someone do. Get in the ring. Do your fucking job. So I've just turned the page. These are the notes I've got left. Jesus. Yep. Taker slows the pace back in the ring with mm-hmm. back elbows in the corner, but he misses a boot. Yes. Triple H starts raining down right hands, but is then dropped face first onto the top turnbuckle. And then I put it here, and this is God's honest truth. I legitimately zoned out for about 30 seconds. Yeah. I was staring at the screen. But you weren't taking anything took in. Took nothing in, and then came back as Taker hit a sidewalk slam. So I hope nothing important happened in that period, because I refused to rewind it. No. Uh, the undead man drives the point of the elbow twice into Triple H before the guillotine leg drop over the apron. Oh, uh, yes. Mm-hmm. The game starts to fight back with rights, but runs into a big boot. Yep. Once more, they head back outside. Stop, stop it. Yeah, I know. Stop I know. It. Every damn time. As Taker throws him to the floor, uh, the game then hits a suplex on the floor, which, again, that's got to suck. Yeah, it doesn't look nice. And they return to the ring, mercifully. Mm. I'm finding this match dreadfully <laughs> boring. I knew you wouldn't enjoy it, which makes it hilarious. <laughs> I was sat there going, I swear to God, if that yep. bastard hits old school, I'll be Oh, were well, you waiting for him to hold hands and go up the rope? Because they do go up the ropes now. But, it, but, yeah. Yeah. So both men fight on top of the turnbuckles, but it doesn't really come yeah. to anything. It's no. just a, much of a nothing. Boring headbutts. I hate them. I hate them. Because mm. we know they don't connect. Mm. And unless your camera angle is spot on, we can see or you've got the, it doesn't connect. Yeah. Like McIntyre hits oh. the Glaswegian kiss. Yes. Yep. It just, no. Both men, yeah, so we just covered that. Taker then hits the dumbass running clothesline. How, if you're six foot ten, which mm-hmm. Undertaker is. Giant. 
you run and you hit them full force. You jumping and then just catching them at the top, that's less impactful than if you just yeah. run at them full force. Stupid. Hate it. Moped man then removes the turnbuckle padding, but is countered with an Irish whip into the exposed steel. Of course. A neck breaker. You know, why not? Well, exactly why not. Neck breaker swiftly follows, as does a very, very weak spine buster by Triple H. And I think mm. it's because Undertaker's heavy, Triple H wasn't set right. No. Triple H's turn to go back first into the steel, and then Snake Eyes is no sold. So I don't understand this. So he got so the Snake Eyes is when he's dropped face first onto the turnbuckle. Yeah. So earlier on when Triple H was mounting down with punches, yeah. Undertaker kind of fell backwards and let Triple H hit face first. Yes. He sold that. This one, on exposed steel, yeah. when it was thrown there, didn't sell, then hits the running high knee. I'm feeling salty. <laughs> Taker hits a DDT and we hear the two have a nice little chat, oh, discuss yeah. their weekend yeah. plans. Uh, not the first time they do it either. No, it's Happens not. Later it's on. annoying. Really dumb and obvious ref bump is how I describe this. Uh, uh, this winds me up so bad. Because Earl so Hebner dumb. does this weird little, um, oh, I'm going to dance onto the dance floor dance, and then just shuffles his way into, into the corner. Yeah, it's like when people are lying on the mat, isn't it? And they're, they're moving into position. Into position. It's yeah. like, you're, you're standing, you're allowed to move around, just don't make it look so fucking obvious. Yeah, Triple H effectively goes to hit a pedigree, yeah. Undertaker blocks it and then slingshots him straight into El Hebner, who then freezes in animation like That's Han Solo in so Star funny. Wars. At this point, this was where I thought, I see, I don't remember this at all, and I was like, oh, do we get a new ref? I was like, I wonder if the rock... I thought the rock was going to come out in a ref top and he be like a special a special guest ref. Alas, he didn't. But what, I like thought... Paul Heyman just counting the win at yes. one night stand. Yes. Yeah. But then Hebner gets smashed again for good measure by The Undertaker. Oh, yeah. Both it, men like, go fully down. Fully intentionally as well. Yeah. That's, a D, that's a DQ, isn't it? No, no. So you're thinking of the second ref. We haven't got to that bit yet. So this is where Undertaker goes to oh, clothesline him in the corner see. and then twats El Hebner right. again. Okay. Both men then go down. Yeah. This is when uh, old Rocky Johnson, well, not Rocky Johnson, that's his dad, Rocky Maivia, appears. This was so dull because you could see the... Like, they needed, obviously, the rock to come out because... The, there's nothing going on in the ring. They're just match. lying there. It's a shit shit match. Awful. So I actually put when he appears, my attention returns. Yeah. For a bit. Yeah. Uh, then he chases Heyman off because, yeah. and this was good. And then he takes the headset off him. And then he's on commentary. Yeah, I didn't for a mind bit. that. And then the Rock clarifies Heyman's lies because Heyman had said that Brock had confronted yeah. him in the locker room, uh, and the Rock got in the people's car, left the people's <laughs> arena, went up the people's highway. And that then... really fucking annoying. Oh, I thought that was good. <laughs> I yeah, that but was it's really again, good. it's the whole. Oh, never mind. So just to move on, this. And then the first thing the Rock says, "Hey, we should walk by the people's salad," <laughs> which is a kid. Uh, Heyman had earlier said that the Rock left in the people's car, etc. Mm-hmm. So that explains why the Rock did that. Taker then grabs a steel chair, but Triple H stops him using it and clotheslines him to the floor again. Yeah, of course. A crappy brawl outside ensues until Taker hits a big boot to the Rock. I thought which... Jr. might call it a slobber knocker at that point. Brilliant, but alas, he didn't. No, we didn't. I don't think we've got any slobber knockers no, no. in this one. No, I always think when I hear the word slobber knocker, my brain goes somewhere slightly different. But it, oh, when Jr. Okay. when <laughs> Jr. says it, it's fine. If if the King was saying it, I've got questions. Yeah. The one thing, because I actually rewound it, and I don't know why I rewound anything in this match, but um, when Undertaker then booted the Rock, I wanted to see how obvious the setup for it was. Mm-hmm. And you can see the Rock is looking out the peripheral of his eye as he's leaning more and more forward over oh, the table, so Taker can reach him with right. his boot. Uh, the Rock absolutely kills Carlos Cabrera yes. on the Spanish announce table. Nice little lap dance. <laughs> yep. I mean, it's worse ones to get, I guess, if you're Carlos. Yeah, that's right. uh, the Rock then comes back out of nowhere, returns fire with right hands, but mm-hmm. he hits Triple H with the chair accent instead of, instead of Taker. Yeah. And we see the blade job of the night. So this is what I, so I said. Obviously, he's bleeding. This is a blade, right? 100%. Cool. 100%. I'd like to now identify these. Yeah. Yeah, no. Do they still do them now? I know uh, obviously WWE. we have a lot of bleeding, but now, so now is the bleeding real? Well, I saw someone bleed on SmackDown mm-hmm. this past week. I don't know if you saw any of the highlights. Well, there's only one person boy, I'm thinking of. Oh. LA Knight had a oh, bloody face. I didn't see that. I saw I... Becky Lynch, but... Oh, okay. Um, oh, that was from the mouth, wasn't it? Mm. Yeah. Oh, so that could be a, that like could a be squeezy... A, a jolly job. Yeah. Um, yeah, I didn't like how I said that either, to be fair. But yeah, this one was definitely a blade. Okay. 100% a blade. 
especially when it was like so perfect like down there mm-hmm. yeah and again a neat cut um also just for facts yeah um triple h was 33 i'm bringing the ages here but i also didn't mind that because i was like he's got a lot of wear and tear <laughs> <laughs> why why are you smiling at me like that? So I'm just thinking about you just imagining banging the ever loving shit out of him. No, I just I that that note has been saved from when I said how old the Undertaker was and I just thought I'm just gonna tell you at some point how well, old that's he what was. we could do. You could be getting a rally b- uh, by Triple H and then I could be uh, like banging Molly Holly and then just be high five in the middle. Stop. Like, no, well this is the angle that you seem to be taking with these. No, I didn't say anything, I just said he was thirty three. Yeah, he's a year younger than me, which mm. really makes me sad. He's too younger than me. But he looks a yeah. lot older, so it's fine. Yeah, that's true. But I mean at least he's And also it was back then. He's Obviously he's I've... not younger than us now. True, but he's had a prime. I've not had one of them. Give over. No, I, I mean, uh, it just makes me sad. I need to work hard in the new year. <laughs> so, yeah. Then we, I've, I've, I've completely lost where we are. New here, ref no. comes out. Yeah, yeah, that's it. New ref comes out. Uh, Taker then hits a last ride. Mm-hmm. Uh, the ref's still down. Nick Patrick is the second ref he runs oh, in. Is this the one that gets punted? Yep. Uh, but again, he only counts the two. So, just mm-hmm. for the. Shits and giggles, take a plant him with the right hand. And the he match sells should it. be finished. He sells it like a damsel fainting. Oh, that's so stupid. But, the, but we should be finished. That's yeah, a but DQ. He, didn't, he didn't have the ability to call for a DQ anyway. It's honestly stupid. I mean, it would have ended in the same same well, end result, yeah, realistically. Uh, second ref goes flying. The rock unloads on Taker once more and then hits a rock bottom. Of course he does. Everyone's down. And Triple H slowly, and I cannot stress enough slowly. Why has he got his arm in the air though the whole time? Keep your arm down and use it to crawl. His arm was up because the he's whole he's selling time. the fact he's fucked. Honestly, put your arm down, use it to army crawl. You're fine. He then very slowly goes to cover the biker. Oh, get on with the slowest count. Ever. Ref count is even slower. Yeah. And the kick out nearly caused me to cry. Legitimate tears. I yeah. want this to be done. I'd literally put this is the slowest match of my life. Yep. Please Even slower end than the Hogan match. This mess. Mm-hmm. Oh, for sure. Mm. Yeah, Weird. for sure. Weird. Pedigree then hits, but the ref is now again completely unaware for some reason. He's now facing the wrong way, doesn't know what's going on. Yeah. And you know we talk about the refs being not good mm-hmm. in terms of not seeing anything. Uh maybe don't play the music. Yeah. When Rock came out, if you're some Mel like yeah. oh, I wonder who that is. Yeah. But it gets worse later on. We are coming to the tail end, mercifully, on this Thank one. God. Taker with the 408th low blow of the evening. Rolls up Triple H with a handful of tights. Oh, yeah. Painfully, painfully slow count again, but mercifully, this one is over as The Undertaker retains by pinfall. That's a very tight roll-up, that was. We almost was saw snug. what he had on underneath his pants. Probably smell what he had for breakfast yeah. as well from that angle. Taker then starts... Oh. Yeah, sorry. I'll jump in when I get to when you get to the point okay. I've got. Taker starts gobshiting at the rock. Yeah. Who's still on the entrance way, who returns and hits the people's elbow. But he forgot he didn't have an elbow patch on. And he goes to pretend oh, no, And he, he went to take it he went to like sorry, go as if he's gonna take it off and then he's like, Oh, take my shirt off. But I think that might be intentional because he would pretend to throw yeah. it off even if he didn't have one. It was it just made me chuckle. What I thought was funny was, and I didn't know that this in life, so I need mm. to work out what my finisher would be. Because okay. apparently, if you hit a finisher move on anyone, your music just starts playing. Oh. So the rock hits a people elbow, rock's music plays. Oh god, yes it does, doesn't it? Yep. Yes. Pedigree to the rock. Triple, Triple H's, H's music, music play- and starts I wish playing. they'd have just left it at that, yeah. to be fair. I wish they hadn't done any of this. <laughs> And then the choke slams Triple H and Taker's music plays. This whole thing has been the drizzling shits. I put, when that was happening, I hope Lesnar comes out at the end. An F5. Because that would have been brilliant. But I think it also was I was ready for it to be finished. Yeah, I think for me it was massively overdone. I think I just wanted someone to like call an end to it. I, the, sh- the show... Okay, so we know what we both thought of the match. Yes. Boring, not good, yes. long, stop it. What did you think of the show? Where does it grade Ooh. on the 10? Ooh. I, did, I mean, I did quite enjoy it. It's just that last match really drained the life out of me. Mm. I enjoyed the Hogan match more, far more than that last match, which yep, surprised me. Um, and Lesnar and Tess was my match really? of the night. Definitely, for me too. Yeah. Definitely. Um, 
it's hard because you've got some really good ones and then some really not good ones that really bring it down for me. I think we will go with a five and a half. I was going to be slightly more generous and say six because I don't agree with half pointing and five seems a little bit too harsh. That's why I can't go five. If we're so if we're doing no half points, then yes, I would have you to go six. You do whatever scoring system you like. But it's just a shame. But I really, really enjoyed the test match. Yeah, I thought all the matches in the King of the Ring were actually good. Yeah. Uh, everything else. Always happy watching RVD. Yeah. I didn't mind the Hurricane match. Uh, it had more. There. <laughs> There was much more to give, but I, th- I didn't mind it purely because of who it is. Yeah, I think it was the commentary that really just took me out yeah. of that one. The women's match I didn't like. Yeah, again, again for the same reason. Commentary, and then... Eddie just... and Flair under-delivered. Yeah. And the main event was awful. Yeah. That was, for me, mm-hmm. believe it or not, I think that was a worse watch for me, that main event than the Hogan Michaels match. Oh wow, okay. Because that at least has some There's a backstory. There's a story behind yeah. it, whereas this was just a shit wrestling yeah. match. Um and yeah, if it was up to me I'd give it a six. Okay. But there was some definitely some good moments yeah. in this match and it's still in the the sweet spot for me as a, a yeah. fan growing up, yeah, which I like. Sure. Um but yeah, I guess that is the end of this That's episode. It. But I mean yeah. before we sign off we've got to do the usual oh, gosh, yeah. bits and pieces with the social. So yes. if you wouldn't mind uh, confirming that. Um, if anyone wants to ping an email over, wintwicepod at gmail.com, Instagram, wintwicepod, YouTube, wintwicepod, TikTok, <laughs> we are all over the We're all over the place. <laughs> and uh, YouTube seems to be doing quite well. We hit, uh, I think we'd set a, well, the guy who's managing it for mm-hmm. us, um, not going to call out his name because he's getting too many shout outs. Uh, <laughs> he's doing a very good job. He's doing a very good job, he is, he really is. He's, Long I'm also very grateful that some things I've said have not made it into little shorts. Also, I will say that he's also keeping a load in his back pocket oh, in God. case he needs content at a later <laughs> date. Um, but I think you're the one, the clips that you're in are great, to be honest. But he set a target of trying to get 50 by mm-hmm. the end of the year, and we did really well. We over exceeded that. Yeah. Well, we over exceeded it. Well, that's a good choice of wording. But we hit, I think, 69 before. Of course it was. It was. It genuinely was as well. Cheeky 69. Yeah, absolutely. Maybe later. Um, oh and then we got, I think we are 85. So that was the moment. Yeah. So it seems to be doing quite well. And some of the videos yeah. have, have yeah. taken off, which is nice. So the next couple of episodes are going to be a little bit different mm-hmm. for different reasons. One I'm excited about, another I'm not excited I'm about. I'm excited about both. Okay. Um, so the next episode... We're going to be doing, I say a live recording of it, mm. so we'll be watching the show in person at the same time. Yes. We may be drinking, we will be drinking. Absolutely. And I think it will be very interesting to see how oh, it unfolds. God, uh, <laughs> I'm just going to end up as a mess. <laughs> oh, great. Absolutely fine by me. Um, and it will be for a show that we saw in person, because it will be interesting to discuss It would be good whole... to me to remember some of it. Yeah, so I think I've actually watched it back since we were there once, but this was not uh, long see, after I've it happened. Not, I've not watched it back. So it will be uh, AEW All and In. first non... Well, WWE watch, yes. watch review. I didn't even think of that. I mean, we've had ECW, well, but yeah, it was but under it WWE's really guys. So, yeah. yeah, it's the first, first non... First non... That's oh, interesting. Yeah, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, so we'll be watching that live, so that'll be next weekend's uh, upload. Mm-hmm. And then we'll be starting a, a new journey. So excited. So, as we know, that she might have mentioned it a few times, <laughs> Holly doesn't... <laughs> particularly care for things that I hate look watching old stuff that look old yeah. quote unquote old um so we are going to be going not right back but we're going to be going way back into the old time machine and going to watch the granddaddy of them all from the very beginning mm-hmm. so we're going to be doing a little series i say little series it's not little it's a long all. series massive we're going to be doing march through the manias yeah starting all the way back at wrestlemania one so to give holly a little bit of a break because there are some WrestleManias that obviously Holly will enjoy as we get into will the later I? era. Oh, Definitely. later ones, absolutely. Yeah. You might struggle with the first 15. Oh, but... fuck me, Jesus <laughs> Christ. 15? But... No, you, oh. I think you will struggle genuinely up until about 9. Oh, lordy. Just because of the type of the match structures were different back then. But I think when we start to get into the Shawn Michaels, Bret Hart era, yeah. you'll start to get into it more because okay. it, was, it was different. The well, whole... it was good. <laughs> yeah, some of it was. 
<laughs> the Hulk Hogan era will be where you'll struggle. Oh, God, okay. But to be nice to Holly, so yeah. it's not just one mania after the other mania no. after the other, we're going to split it out. So we'll do, like I said, the first mm-hmm. one will be obviously WrestleMania 1. We'll cover that. The following episode will be a show of my choosing Yes, because I chose this one. This one, and the AW and we was a joint. agreed on that yeah. one, didn't we? So then I'll pick the next show after WrestleMania 1. Please don't pick something old if we're watching I will do my best not to just for the contrast. <laughs> oh, look, like as close to 2000 onwards, onwards as possible. Uh, that, was my, that was my intention okay, anyway. Good, good. So, um, Otherwise I'll, I will have a drink problem. Yeah, no, that's fine. I'll, I'll be there to <laughs> and a Freddo the problem. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, we'll then um, alternate between the WrestleMania journey yeah. and other shows. But this will be Holly's first experience at watching mm. old WrestleManias yes, and it will. old footage. Yes. And I'm very excited. Mm, any any final messages before we sign off pray for me thoughts and prayers for holly uh if you could be so kind but yeah hopefully you've all enjoyed uh this episode yeah um, i've had a blast I've had a lovely time had a lovely time, lovely time. nice there seems to be in the sweet spot of about two hours two and a half hours yeah, seems to be how on. these shows go obviously the next one will be just the length of the show because well, we're yeah, doing it live true. so that'll be even longer Come on. theory But yeah, hopefully everyone's had a good time and you will all tune in for episode number nine next week. Take care. Bye. Bye.